And we are live. Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. You're in North Carolina on the States. We am and ready to get started. Welcome to the Dragon Slayer, the digital dragon. And today we are going to complete our work and get our book work one printing. Mahan Rook, work one. Several mods from Dulcifer and Penrod. You all, we've got a little bit of changes since we left last time. Oops, give me one second. Um, so we've had a few changes since the last time you saw this on stream. Um, one, I do want to give a thanks and a shout out to KB3D. Um, I had to order a hot end and a build platform for this, and KB3D was able to get it in the mail and get it to me quickly, so we are ready to go for the next part of the stream. Thanks again for KB3D. They've done a lot over the last couple of builds to actually get me parts that I need to finish the build. Appreciate it. Um, I'm in no way sponsored by KV3D. I'm just wanting to shout them out because they helped me on, not help me, but uh, they've gotten parts to me very quickly for builds that I'm working on. I, she's seen me sponsored so far, so hey, it's the future. The other thing I want to do is let me just give a shout out to Modbot, good swag. And also my crimping ain't easy shirt. I figured it was an appropriate shirt for the day since we will have to do a little bit of crimping. I'll show you some of the little shortcuts that I take to limit the amount of crimping and wiring work. Builds. That's all pretty having wires like that. Um the other thing you'll notice is there's a different uh bottom plate here. So I, I did see this design out there and I really liked having that Rook logo on there and having it in color. So I went ahead and reprinted the bottom cover plate. You'll also notice the other one, actually the rods went through it. This one has cut out around all four, make it a lot easier to just undo the screws right off machine. Left off, we did have our build plate in and everything. Um, a couple of other changes that have happened um, recently, and some of this was just me trying to do some pre-planning and figuring out where some things would go. So I do have our um, electronics started back here. We have a Victory Tech SKR Pico board that we're going to use as our controller. And we have a Raspberry Pi Zero W to start with. Um, we're going to start with this one and see if we have any um, performance issues or thermal issues with it. Do, I did just get in a Banana Pi M2. So the difference is the Raspberry Pi Zero is a single core, um, I believe a 600 megahertz processor, where the Banana Pi is 1.2 gigahertz and it's a quad core processor. Other than that, it's very comparable as far as all the inputs, form factor, and even a GPI. So I do have that configured. All I would need to do is basically undo the screws, take off this plug, put the Banana Pi in, plug still the same. We'll be off and running with it as well. I'm going to start with the Raspberry Pi Zero and have any issues with performance. Any other uh, thermal overload? That, and then we'll check that out. Or maybe we'll just do that completely. Um, you will notice that there is a 4010 fan mounted here. 
they do it all in the black, so it kind of blends in with the band tone. And this is kind of moved off the center line of the heat sinks for the drivers and the Raspberry Pi. And that was done simply because I'm going to need access to the USB port. There's two USB ports on here. Um, the bottom one is the power. If you're going to run it off of external power or not, we're going to run it off of GPIO. And then the top one here is your actual USB um, connector that you would use to add any peripheral. So we will be using a dongle to get to a standard USB connector. This is a male to female connector. And we will use this so that we can use our um, Raspberry Pi Pico based input shaper on this down the road. So what will happen eventually is after I run input shaper on it, I will move this fan one more notch over. Um, other thing we'll see on here, um, put it on its side, is this piece right here. So this is a clamp that just clamps onto a barrel connector. And that barrel connector um, has a two-wire screw terminal output. And so this is how we will run our power from our external power brick over to the ERP. So we'll just run a red and, and black wire over here, and we'll have our other plug-in heat bed and hot end. You will notice there's a couple of other connections here. This is a connection to the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is fan three, which is the controller board fan, which is this one. And then we also have the X in stop and the X motor already connected. And I'll go into a little more detail about why I did that. Um, the X end stop, because of the way the end stop is mounted, um, we'll see the end stop right here. This is a standard um, reality end stop, and it is just held on with some VHB tape to this little plastic piece right here that um, that's mounted. And so I went ahead and had to put in the wire because there's very, very little room to get that connector on once you put the motor in. Very, very tight in there. I'm sure if you can see that. So I did get that wire in there, and I did note that the Creality in-stop wires, um, when you connect it to the either the Creality board or the standard SKR Mini E3V3, in stop connectors two pin on the SKR Pico, their in stops are three pin So I did have to look at the schematics, figure out which was the ground and which power, make sure, or excuse me, the signal and the power, and make sure that they were hot for those. So I did do that, excuse me, I did do that off camera. Um, and then the Z motor, because I'm going to reuse Creality wires, but I'm not using Creality motors in this, um, you will need to pull out your connections to figure out which pens are the phased pairs on your motor. So you're for a, a Dipolar motors have two pairs um, that create the actual um, magnetic fields to move the motor. So, what you have to do is pair one is in side by side. Um, so, the one side of the connector is the six pin that goes into the the other side is a four-pin connector into 
the actual board. What you will do is plug the six pin into your motor, then you will do a continuity check on your multimeter, and you'll put your your leads on each of these pins. You want to do the first two pins together. And if there's continuity, you should get some type of reading. In this case, I was getting 2.7. Um, then you would go to the second pair, and you should also have right around 2.6 to 2.8. You know, they just have to be really close. If they are way off of each other, um, then chances are your motor itself may be going bad. It might be wise to. But in this case, with the standard wiring, pins one and three and two and four combed out to be. So what I did is I went through and I swapped the middle two pins. Probably see the crisscross. So because I did that on Z motor and confirmed that, I was then able to say, okay, that's that should be the same for all the motors because I'm using all four stepper on my motor from a set. So that's going to allow me to, I'll say, start off with a good baseline and all four motors should move rather than fight against each other. You have your, your phases out of line, the motor it won't move, it'll just make this grinding sound. I don't think it really hurts the motor, but you're not gonna get the movement you expect. So you definitely need to go and then pull out your wires. The other thing I did off camera was I got my BMG clone, definitely a clone, this is not. Um, I got my BMG clone put together um, along with the motor. And this motor mount is the one, it's a plastic mount and it came with this knockoff BMG. Um, the, the holes do line up, so it is secured pretty well. There's a little bit of flex in the mount as a whole. I don't think that's going to cause us a problem down the road. Let's see. But I do know that the mount that I had printed out if I mount it in the right place, you'll see that the, the motor and the, uh, it, it goes in the opposite direction. It needs to go this way and mount. So it won't work for putting the motor back here. Now, put it on the side, you know, that would work because I'd have the motor here and the, well, that, that wouldn't even work either because that's going to put my um, my spring tensioner on the inside. So that won't work either. So I'm really, this is really the only place that I can mount this and I have to use other mount. Let's see who else joined us. Um... Welcome in. Hello. Alessandra. Rapsnat. Gamers and Stream. Just call me your own. And Kata. Welcome in. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, the other thing that I did off camera. Um, was I had recently got in my hot end that we're going to use for this. So I have went ahead and test fitted that along with the rookery to make sure that everything was going to fit right. And then I spliced the wires for the fans of the rookery. And we'll get into an issue there where I may wind up having to redo the fans and the wiring. I also have my Heat bed. Do not need to get the heated bed. You could literally just get the bed and run it non heated, and you're perfectly fine because this is basically it's all a PLA printer. 
all the printed parts are PLA. So you're not going to be like enclosing this printer as it stands today and running any high temp in it. The printer frame would literally uh, start to, to fall apart as it will start melting. It. But I did go ahead and get the heated bed. So you always get the magnet on first that allows you to push down and really get a good seal on the magnet. Then you'll put your your heater pad on, which in this case is a Canovo 24 volt 100 watt. And you'll put your heater pad on. And then I like to put um, like a box or something on either side and then add weight to allow that 3M uh, glue to really, really stick. But you want to, you do not want to apply weight directly to the bottom of this because this is your thermistor and your heater and you will break your thermistor and then you'll have issues. Hey, West One, good morning. How are you doing today? Um, and then what I do is I just put a little bit of tape around the edge so I can get a good edge and add some RTV silicone around it. You know, coming up on the edge, no big deal. And normally you'd want to add another thermal uh, fuse on here. On this particular one, I'm not simply because I'm never going to run it over 60. And I will probably not be running this without me being in the intended. But the standard way of doing this would be to put an inline uh, ceramic fuse that breaks, not a um, self-healing fuse, because all that will do is it'll break the circuit. And then as soon as the temperature drops, it reheals. And then I'll start heating back up. So you're just going to go in this constant heating cycle and burn up your stuff. So I really should have the ceramic fuse on here. What I will probably do later on is go ahead and mount the ceramic fuse on here using RTV, splice one side of the wires. You want it to be the feed wire, the wire that's actually bringing in, not on the way back out. So we will go ahead and get this mounted today as well, as well as our hot end. And what I'm gonna start with is actually running the wires for the motors. And I wanna do that specifically because, once again, I'm going to reuse some Creality wires from various Ender projects that I've done on my, um, on my Ender wire builds right behind me. Um, so these are excess spare um, extruder, or not extruder, but uh, motor cables. So they're not marked X, Y, Z, what have you there. I think that all of them may be easier. So what I want to do is take the longest one, go into this motor, and you'll notice I've got some tape on here. So when you're looking at a core XY, your motors are in the back. You have, you, you know, your, your Core XY printers go blah, blah, so blah, blah, black sheet, right? This is your B motor. This is your A motor. Your extruder motor, then your Z motor underneath. So when you go to do your connections, your B motor goes into the X, and your A motor goes into your Y. So I just made these. Uh, labels real fast to remind me to stick them in the right places when I go to do Oh, yeah. Yeah, sis. Um, I can imagine that you're moving slow and you've had a whole lot going on trying to do the storm cleanup. Um, we've had some decent winds here as well. So I, I get you. I do get you. Um, and one thing I just noticed on here, so it, for me, it's always easier to change this end, the, the four pin end, because they're the bigger connectors than the six pin end. What I just noticed is on these Creality wires, um, they're not straight through. The, the middle wires on here are actually crossed on the six pin. 
So if I use the wires that came with these motors, which I believe are straight through, they should have worked. But they have the JST connector for the six pin connector for the motor side. And they have DuPont pin connectors at the other side. And they're way long. So I would have wound up cutting and recrimping them anyhow. Um, and I just like to reuse these wires and save those bigger ones for a project that's going to need longer wires. Hey, Chewie, how are you doing? So we've just been kind of going over some of the stuff that's changed and some of the stuff that I did off stream to get ready for today. Um, the biggest one is, the most obvious one, is the change into the bottom plate here where I went with the two color design for the roof. Hired and building a Z. Okay. Needs one. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so we've got the new plate. We have a fan installed here, and it was really to test the placement and where I could stick it. And eventually it does not line up with our heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi and the Pro drivers. But that's because I do need to have access to use the um, male to female pigtail so I can run input shaper. And then once I'm done with that, this fan will move one notch over so that it'll be more in line with blowing over the heat sinks. Um, I do also have the ZN stop installed and wired up. I had to get the wire in place before putting the motor on because otherwise I wouldn't have access to put it in, uh, connect it up. And also that goes into a three pin connector on this board. So I had to figure out which pins were which based on the diagram for the Creality boards, and then just switch the connector from a two pin to three pin. And the X motor went ahead and got plugged in, and that was really because I needed to ohm it to find the pairs. So with that said, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start working on the motors. And once again, I'm gonna take the longest of the three motor wires I have here, And that's going to be used on the A motor, which is going to go into the Y connector. And that's because all of my wires are going to run down this side. So I'm going to get this connected. Big finger, small, small space. There we go. I'm going to get that connected and then I'm going to route this wire right around the back side of that motor so it can join up with the setup that's going to come over here. Okay. And then I'm immediately going to go ahead and connect it because once again, all of these have markers on them and they're most of them are a Z motor or an E motor. So these markers aren't technically correct. And I will probably go ahead and, and do something, and these are going to be long, um, but we'll make those work as well. And so once again, this is the A motor, so it's going to go into the Y plug. And on the Pico, the motors are E, X, Y, Z1, Z2. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into, not into the third one over, and that will be our Y motor. Okay. I'm going to leave these long for the time being, and we'll do some cable management a little bit later, and I'll probably shorten these up down the road. And my next set of wires are going to be the same. I just want to see. So this one is marked E, so that will be good to actually use for the extruder motor itself. We'll go ahead and stick that one in that motor and bring this down. And we'll go into the E. Now with the with the Raspberry Pi Pico, all of these connectors are 90 degrees to the board. And you have to be a little careful when you're putting in the connectors, because if you apply too much pressure the wrong way, you will bend the connector up off the board. So just be careful. And that means our next motor 
which is marked P as well, as those seem to be about the shortest ones we had. I'm going to go over here and go into the B motor, which is going to go into the X um, slot. So once again, here we have E, X, Y, Z1, Z2. Now you cannot use this board to do like a Z tilt with two independent motors because these, these are connected in parallel. So they work off the same driver versus separate drivers. You would need separate drivers to do that. So once again, we will we'll try and lay these wires in in such a way that we can get them out of the way, but still have them laid in here. Okay, so that's our motors going. Next up, we're going to mount our hot end to the carriage here. And that's going to mount right into these top two bolts that go there. Our hot end that we're going to use for this is a Revo CR edition. So it does have that that flat back um, platform with a rounded front edge. Now, normally what it says to do here is don't use the 354 um, inserts. It calls out for longer inserts that are, that are sitting proud of this front. All I did was I added additional heat set inserts on the back here. Um, and really the reason I'm doing that is because once again, this mounts PLA and I don't want any heat from this heat sink to be too close to that PLA and start melting it. So it is a set of motor ender or ender motor wires, Chewy. That's exactly what they are. And I tend to reuse those as much as possible, especially if I was using ender motors on this which is what I planned on originally. They, they just wouldn't line up for the B and A motors. Um, but if I could use the Creality motors, I would have, and they would have just plug and play. Not a problem. So what we're gonna need to do is get this mounted here. Go ahead and put it in a little small, because it's not completely in the way. And because we have these standoffs, we're going to need to move, you know, switch back and forth and just get one started a couple of turns and then go to the other. Just keep going back and forth. Actually, I'm going to use the ball end driver just because it's going to be easier to get in there. Like I said, you're just going to do a couple of turns on each side and then go back and, and start again. The other side. When I put the rookery on, why that one's looking so. so tight. Yeah, and that's why you have to keep going back and forth on this is so you don't bind these connectors. If I was, if I didn't have like a, a nut or the heat set insert back there, I'd be able to just go front to back you know, one side and then put the screw in and do the other side. But because I'm doing it this way, I really need to work, work them both in at the same time. Part of what the, what the problem here is, is that the heat set insert itself is tightening up against the hot end. But we're good. We've got a good connection there. Couple more just to carry down on it. Okay. And you'll notice that I've got my motor wires coming out the side. So I did that for a reason. You do have to bend this up gently 
and I do mean gently bend um, your thermistor and power wire up gently. Um, because this wire normally sticks straight out to the side and it's, it's a piece of metal as a strain relief for these wires. So you've got to gently, slowly bend it up so that you can route the wires up and out. You do not want to try and bring them under and out the back because you will catch um, on the um, on the Z-belt axis and rip your wires out. Bad. So you need to go up and out. The other thing I'm going to do before we attach our rookery is to make sure that I can get my um, PTFE tube in before I get the rookery in there because then everything gets really, really tight. I want to make sure I have a good connection. So this is a used piece of PTFE tubing. In fact, you can tell that there is a tapered edge on there from where it gone in. And if you look, you can see some fraying down here at the end. That's how far this was in. So this went into a PTFE lined um, hot end at one point. But this is good tubing still overall. Most likely this was in a bound configuration anyhow. But what I'm going to do is I am simply going to use a jig here just because it is, gives me like a good miter cut so I can do a straight cut. And I'm going to cut this end off below where it frays because I'm not going to need any, you know, I'm not going to need this. Above where it was. I'm not going to need all of this tubing. And that just made sure that I have a nice straight cut on this end. This piece, I'm going to remove my blue clip, hopefully without seeing it flying into no man's land. And that end that I just cut is going to go all the way down in there. And I'm going to make sure it goes all the way down in seats and then I'll put the but what I'm going to do first is, since my extruder is offset towards this side, I'm going to move my hot end all the way this direction and then figure out about where I need my, the other end of my tube cut to give me a good bend radius where it can still get everywhere. And I'll push that pneumatic fitting down again. that out find that little mark that I and I'm just doing rough I'm fine with it being a little bit longer than it needs to be I'm going to cut that end off this is now going to be my PTFE tube from my hot end back into my extruder Gives me that nice good gentle bit comes back it able to bend up but you always want to go to the farthest point away from your extruder when you're cutting your PTFE tubing make sure you have a gentle bend and it's not like some weird arc it's going to put tension and pressure on your filament for now and I have that sitting there I'm not going to actually push it down in there because I am going to want to have this off to look at that little bit of filament I have in there and start to do motor testing, make sure I have it in the right. Yeah, those are, those are pretty familiar uh, motor wires and I like to reuse those as much as possible, Chewy, like I said, because that way I can keep the really long motor wires because I think those Motors come with like one and a half or um, was it one and a half or two meters or something like that of wire. I mean, they're super long. And I can use it on like my big core XY back here to run it down around. And so 
I like to use those for larger projects. And so since I know that this was previously used and was in a hot end, that goes in the garbage. This, this goes in parts bin because I can reuse, I could probably get seven or eight lengths out of this for some of my direct drives um, where you go from the extruder to the hot end and you have you know an inch or two of a gap between those so yeah too much bend the filament doesn't move and if it's a harsh bend like if it's getting pulled like that so if it's getting pulled at a weird angle like that it could actually snap the filament and then you'll start printing air and you'll you'll basically bake the filament in the nozzle because there's nothing to push it and you'll have bad issues. Okay, so we've got these put in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back here in the middle and we're going to put in the rookery. Now, what I did on the rookery was, one, I reprinted this part because after looking at it, um, I noticed that the fan holes were kind of oblong. So something was wonky there, so I did reprint them, and they came out nice. And you will also see that I went ahead and soldered the two um, lower fans together and I made an extension, it's just a plug-in pigtail extension for our 3010 fan that goes in the front here for the heat sink, or the, yeah, the, the uh, hot end heat sink core. Now the issue is, is when I did this, I did have it towards the front, but for whatever reason, rather than having those wires come up like this, I had the wires down. So I may have miscalculated and cut these wires a little bit short, we'll find out. Um, I'm going to turn this around and install this because you will see just how easy this is to install uh, the rookery on here. So you're going to pull your wires up and to the side just to make sure they're out of the way. And it's going to just slide in from the front on these you know, you've got this keyed location there. Make sure you bring your motor wires up and through the middle as well. Come on. And it's just going to push forward onto these mounting wheels. So push forward onto those ears just like that. And then we'll use two small screws just to hold this in place. And you'll see these little nubs right here. These are to put heat set inserts into and you can mount an accelerometer back here. Now the accelerometer that I have, which is the Adafruit ADXL, will not mount there. So probably what I will wind up doing is just creating a mount plate. Um, like an L-shaped mount plate so I can mount it horizontally right behind this and be able to run my input sheet. Exactly. Like I said, I may go through and, and clean up the wires because these will be a little bit long, but I'll do that off stream. I mean, as the shirt said, crimping ain't easy. It's kind of a pain. I will have to do a few crimps on here for the heated bed, but not too bad. So we've got this. We're going to go ahead, and I believe we just need like a M3 by 6 or an M3 by 8 to lock this down on there. Um, 
see if these M3 by 8s go, and if they don't, then I will break out my M3 by 6 button head. So, once again, just line that up, screw them down into the heat set inserts that we put in there before. And I'm feeling that bottom out, so the 8s won't work. We have to use the 6s. It means I'll have to switch over to my button head. I like the looks of button heads and how they uh, give a nicer look, especially when you're around any wiring too. It's it gets them out of the way. Make sure the holes are lined up, and it's two screws. And so with two screws, if you ever need to work on this hot end, take these two screws out, and everything just pulls right off the front and you have access to that hot end again. So to me, that's kind of a quality of life thing. Hey, Hydrid Robotics, how are you doing today? Hey, Westry, how are you doing? Why am I? This. Um, so sis, those parts that I was telling you that I needed for your project, um, they should be in today. And once they get in, I'll be able to finish that up. So on Tuesday stream, with your permission, uh, which I have already gotten, and that for everybody here. Um, so Tuesday stream, we will be showing <coughs> the project printer that Sarah sent over to me to get back in working order for. Excuse me, uh, Westry One sent to me. So. Awesome. Printers and robots. That's good. So with these wires, what I'm going to do before I go through and start trying to do any management on these wires, um, I am going to make sure that they should be split so that really the one wires are coming out the other one side, the others are coming out the other side. Just flip those underneath like that. And we'll bring the wires around as a separate loom and we'll just zip tie them for now. And once again, we'll run them down here, join them up, go straight down. Okay, so that'll be kind of the plan there. And we can do that with some wire loom or um, just zip ties for the time being. Come back and tie them up later after we. After somebody adjusts the wires that he may or may not have to lengthen back up. So these, these wires for the hot end are going to be long um, on this printer. They're made to be able to go, but they are pre-terminated. Once again, they're using the DuPont connector um, for the thermistor, and they do have the ferrules on them from the factory. So another nice thing I like about the E3D is they do come all pre-crimped out and everything. So can't put this up on its end anymore because I have the roof, but we will try and lift this end up some to make it easier for everybody to see. Some balancing act. Once again, we know we're going to try and bring our, our wires down into that realm there. Um, our hot end thermistor wires. The thermistor wires. Oh, yeah. And everybody, it's always, always a good thing. Find the pen out for your board and print it out. So that you have a reference that you can work off of. And then when you're working on the board, make sure that it is setting in the same way that your board is. And that's going to come into effect when you start looking for anything that's got a polarity on it so that you get your polarities right and you don't let out the magic smoke. Got you a new home to build. 
New home or a new printer? You can definitely send me a bomb. That's, that's cool, Chewy. And is this a new custom design or is this a something that uh, you set up? Now, the nice thing on thermistors is thermistors. Keep it up on my tablet. Yeah. Is, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Send, send me the uh, printer bomb and I'll take a look at it. We can talk about it. Um, the nice thing about thermistors is there's no polarity. So it doesn't matter which direction it goes, it's going to work because they're nothing more than a resistor, basically. Right? Same thing with your, your hot ends. Technically, no polarity on your hot end. So it's just going through. It's basically providing a resistance so it, it gives off. With that said, um, we've got the hotbed connector is furthest this way. And then the second connector in would be for the hot end thermistor, which is what this is. So we would bring that down here and plug that in. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. And I'd really want to, in the long run, switch this DuPont out for a JST connector, which means I'll have to cut off the end and recrimp it. But the DuPonts will slip in here. Um, and they will, they should stay in place simply because of the, um, the amount of space that's in there. I think the, the back of the Z motor is going to help push this into place. Keep it there. Once again, big fingers, tight spot, and in the butt. And sorry, I know that this doesn't come out very well on camera. Pitch on these two connector types, DuPont and the JST in this case are the same, it's the 2.54 millimeters, so that's why that DuPont connector will fit on. And as you can see, there's enough, there should be enough tension that, I mean, it's a little wiggly, so if we start getting some wonky readings, we will definitely have to swap that out, but. Hey, Hydrid Robotics, thanks for continuing your subscription, that's awesome. One of the first ones going in for the two month. Appreciate that. Custom build is something I don't have yet. Okay. You're just going to leave me hanging, right? You're not going not gonna to let me in on it. Okay. And so this next wire is the heater wire. And once again, I know I'm going to bring most of my wires down this way. And just to keep them kind of sort of pretty and straight, my goal is to bring it around behind that motor. And I'll just kind of loop it under everything. Kind of bring it around that way. I'll have extra wire, of course. So this will make it a little bit easier down the road when I go to pull it tight and then cut it off. Or at the very least, I'll have a bundle of wires under one corner here. So it'll be out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Wetting the build appetite, just what I need. Okay, and once again, it's his power end, heated bed, and the hot end with the 24 volt at the top and the, I'll say the trigger pin or the pin that you're gonna call to turn it on at the bottom. And really what this will definitely pay attention to that is when you, on the heated bed, when you go to do the, uh, when you go to do your uh, fuse, your ceramic fuse, once again, you want to make sure it's on the 24 volt peg because that's the inbound um, line, and you want it to break the inbound, not the outbound. 
the break the inbound um, from the board to the bed, and we'll get these whoop, get these ferrules both in there. And always make sure that they're pushed in all the way. Try and hold a little bit of tension against them, and then tighten them down. Make sure they stay seated. And the other thing you can see here is there's just a little bit of the, probably can't see, but there's just a shade bit of probably half of a millimeter to a millimeter of the actual ferrule length still showing. Um, if it was any more than that, I would actually trim the, the end of the ferrule down some so that there wasn't as much exposed out of the front of the connector. And really it's just to make sure that there's no chance of anything falling or touching it and shorting out across them. Okay. But there, like I said, there's very, very small gap on these smaller barrels, so we should be good there. Okay, next up, that was our hot end wires. Next up are going to be our fans. And so we've got our two that I did the solder joint together. So this is going to be the part cooling fan. And our part cooling fan goes into fan one. We have fan one, fan two, fan three. Fan three goes for the controller board fan. Um, fan one, which is the one all the way down, kind of right in the middle on this side, is the one for the part cooling. We're going to bring that down, plug that in. And once again, you got to be careful when you're putting these connectors in that you don't. Um, kind of pull up when you're trying to tight or push them in. So I just try and squeeze that connector together. And that one's seated. Okay, and then the next one, which has the soldered on connector so that I can take it on and off, is the actual cooling fan for our hot end. So that's gonna come down Go through here and plug in to the other fan. That'll be in fan two. And we'll definitely want to know. We'll definitely want to know those um, when it comes time to validate our config. I have gone in and done the config already on this, but I need to validate the config. Across some wires there, it's gonna tell me to do one. Having long wires on a printer that I know I'm still building and testing and everything is one thing. I will go up and clean them afterwards, but I always try and get decent wire management towards the board to start with. That always reduces issues down the road. And let's see, was there anything else coming from the top down? Nope, don't believe so. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some M3 by 10 uh, socket head screws. And I got this from watching Zombie Hedgehog, and it actually works out really, really well. What we're going to do is just put in socket head screws just a little ways. Into a couple of these. They don't have to be way down in there because they're they're not going to be used for um, 
they're not going to have any pressures on them. All we're going to do is use these to corral the wires some. Just a few threads down in there. And you want to try and make them so that they're about the same as far as what they're sticking out. Go ahead and drop this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And so all we're going to do is take a zip tie and go ahead and start the loop. We're just going to put a zip tie over the heads of these um, screws. I'm not going to make it too tight. I just want it enough that it's catching and holding those wires because I'm probably going to have to add another wire or two on here for the, for the heated bed. But all I'm doing is trying to capture those wires there for the time being. I have to go with them three by twelves. Right, we're just trying to capture those wires and give them a place to go, so that they're not stretched in there, but they are out of the way. We can start to do a little bit of our wire management. We're going to have some extra on this wire and on this wire. So the hot end heater and thermistor wire. All I'm going to do is kind of pull those out so that they follow a rough loop of the ETFE tube up here and with the other wires just so that we can get those zip tied together and we'll do another loop up the top here and do the same we're just going to get that loop started and we're going to put those wires between the screws put our wire tie on there tighten it just a little bit so that it'll stay on there and keep those wires Go ahead and set this up so you can see what I was talking about. So all we did was just put in a couple of screws here and then wrap a wire tie around it. And that's going to give us kind of the channel that our wires are going to go into. And then we'll come through and zip tie the rest of our wires together to kind of give it a soft loom going. And that way that they're all good. And once again, this will be the farthest reach for these wires. So it looks like these wires will still work. Um, I'm just probably not going to connect them together. Um, but we will go ahead and add some zip ties to these right now. Once again, I'm going to zip tie the wires together and keep them separate from the um, the PTFE tubing, but I do want to get these wires right at the top of the rookery where they're right underneath the um, the hot end fasteners. Because that'll provide a little bit of strain relief to these fasteners that are up here. Then we're just going to go every few inches and just bring these together. Once again, wherever there's a connector, I want to go kind of just on one side of that connector. Because that way, if I ever have to do any maintenance here, I can still get in and pop it off and do some maintenance. And eventually, um, the two, um, the two uh, blower fan wires, I did this initially. I think what I'm going to do is redo it and solder them to a header pin and then put a another uh, two pin JST on the other side in the other direction so I can't mix them up. And that's another good way. I, I know on some other printers I have done, I have used um, XT60 connectors. And 
I did them in opposite directions. So on the one, the male side was on the, say on the tool head side, and the female side was on the power. And then for the bed, it was the opposite. So the male was on the power and the female was on the, on the leads going to the hotbed. And that way you can never plug them in wrong. Um, but once again, we're just gonna keep coming down here and moving our wires down and making sure that we've got some wire ties to hold things in place and keep them out of the way so they don't rub up against anything. Oh boy. Try and keep these going side to side. It's gonna be okay for the time being. We'll wax that down and we'll leave all of our extra wires coming down and underneath the printer for the time being. And always, always, always cut your zip ties right at the um, top of the connector. Do not leave them loose and do not um, cut these at an angle because when you when you go to do maintenance on that printer, you will be cursing yourself if you do not believe. Let's hold that. I have to pop that one. There we go, that part's done. The next part um, is going to be our bed. So, once again, I got the bed prepared. Um, bed is a Mike 6 uh, Boron V0 bed from, uh, that I got from KB3D. It is not an LDO bed, it's just a Mike 6 bed. Um, I did a Kenovo 24 volt 100 watt heating pad. Um, you always put the magnet on first because that way you can put it down and you can put weight on it, make sure that it's got good adherence. And then I cut the, the spots out for the holes. You can tell that this magnet didn't go edge to edge, but you cut the spots out for the holes so you can get your bolts in there. And you flip it over and you put your silicone heat pad on. And once you get your silicone heat pad on, you got to be careful because this is your thermistor and your heating wires here. You don't want to put a lot of weight right on it. So I always put a box on either side and then put spools on it. And that will provide pressure to activate that 3M adhesive on the back of the plate. And then just for good measures, a little bit of blue painter's tape around the edge and some RTV silicone, some high temp RTV and let that sit for 24, 48 hours. Um, once you get it applied, take the tape off. Do not let it dry and then try and take the tape off because you'll probably just tear the tape all up and you won't get a nice clean edge. But this gives you a nice clean edge and it keeps it away from the bolt head. So what you'll do is you'll put the bolt in and then the, this is a lock nut. And you just work your lock nut down. These are, 30 millimeter screws, and I'm hoping they're good. If not, then I'll have to pop these out and put 35 or 40s in. Um, and the knobs take a M3 nut. So it's just put the M3 nut in and then use a small bolt on the other side, an M3 by eight or something, to pull the nuts all the way in. So they're captive because they're going to go on this way where the plastic is up towards the um, the screw. And you need some springs. Power to the AC. Um, yep, got 
correct you. Yeah, I can't remember. I went with 30s. I hope they work. And if they don't with these with these heavier springs, then I'll have to swap them out for 35s or 40s. But I did go and order some of the heavier kind of like mustardy yellow springs. So pop your springs in there. Go to get your bed. Now this is where it'll get fun. I believe we want to route these underneath the back of the bed, which means I'm going to have to undo this so I can route the wires. Um, and what we'll do is we'll take the wires and go underneath and out the back. We could potentially go out the top, but there's there's really um, no way to secure them so that they're out of the way of the um, well, what you call the uh, belts for the z-axis. So I'm going to go under, and then we'll we should have a spot where we. Here are those to keep them out of the way. Raise that up a bit, and as you see, it's going to drop because of the weight of the bed. I am not feeling those screws come out. Push down, getting them out, but yeah, I'm going to have to go with some longer screws just to make it. Well, that stinks. These were 30s. We don't have a wire. Guys, this up to 30. This up to 30s here. Give me one second. I need to grab some. Here's. Thirty fives would probably be the best. We'll have a thirty fives. Let me take it back. I think I have thirty fives in button head. Just for these, Just trying to trying to run these screws in with a button head. It's just going to be. That. Okay, I'm just using a pair of needle nose pliers to hold the nylock nut in place while I screw. Yeah, Chewy, the, the real fun part is when you're when you're doing M3 by 50 countersink screws and you're about 40, 45 millimeters in, and you shear the head off the screw. I did that on my um, Death Racer two or three times because I was using carbon fiber PET G, and even though I drilled the holes out part way, it was still too much. The, the holes were still way too tight, and Trying to thread these, um, I'll say not not known. Like if I had titanium screws from a good source, I probably would have been fine. But yeah, you know, doing that with these unknown provenance screws off of AliExpress and or Amazon, it's just no bueno. And once you shear the head off. Trying to get it out is a pain. I had to use um, channel locks and like a baby set of channel locks to get on the end and back it off some. And then I'd constantly just keep moving the channel locks down, try and get the uh, bolts out. It was fun. In a masochistic way.
Yeah, so that's why I think I'm going to rebuild or reprint the um, Death Racer and go with PLA. And, and I may still use the, um, the carbon fiber PET G for like the side plates just to protect the treads and everything some. Um, say so add a little bit of armoring to it, so to speak. But everything else will have to be standard PLA because otherwise, it, even if I did CF PLA, I'm going to have the same issue. I'm just trying to thread the screws into it. Normally, I would have checked these size screws out beforehand, but the springs just came in last night. And I was out running around in the woods yesterday scouting for next weekend with the mentoring group, so I'm tired. Well, PET G is tough. Carbon fiber PET G is even tougher. So I was using um, Atomic Carbon Fiber PET G, and I also have some Atomic Carbon Fiber ABS as well. Yeah, so I was running around the woods. Um, one of the local, um, so we used to, to have a property parcel that we were leasing from Duke Energy, and Duke Energy took that parcel back claimed it wasn't safe but somehow there's now commercial property being built on it so yeah safe, not safe my butt they just wanted the money um but we're able to use the one of the county parks is letting us use some of their area and they're giving us a deal on it because one of the things that we do with the hunting mentoring group is we do a um conservation project so we'll actually go out and we'll put up uh bird and bat houses for them throughout the woods we will plant uh different trees and shrubs for the wildlife and help them manage a couple of the fields that they have and they'll let us you know they cut us a deal on usage of the park and so like we were going out and doing scouting to see where we may see deer sign now and midweek um, a couple of the guys are going to go out and set up some uh pop up deer blinds and put out some corn to try and entice the deer that are already on the property to that location so next week we'll do what we call a camera hunt in which we will start off later in the day and we'll take the mentees out and um, set them up in a blind and we'll sit there and explain to them why we set the blind there, um, what we're looking for, when to really start paying attention for the deer to come around and everything. Yeah, it works out really well. Yep, yep. Try and go out to the ag department or the agricultural extension. And we picked up four blueberry bushes from the ag extension here. And they were bushes that weren't claimed. So we didn't even have to pay for them. We just went down and picked them up. And so I've got, that's one of the things I got to do later today or sometime in the next couple of days is get out there and Dig the you know dig those and plant them in the ground. So, hey Rob Inc, how are you doing? I didn't see you sneak in there. We're gonna hit micro center and get a hard nozzle. If you don't have a micro center right close by you. I just say order them off of Amazon. I'll get there before you can get the micro. Of course, my micro center is four and a half hours away, so. I tend not to go there as often as I 
Okay, so we got longer screws on our bed. We're going to pull our wires back under, back in the right spot, and try and get our screws in the screw. I think we got all three of them there. And because of what I'm working with, it's going to probably not going to I can do. Boom. Gridfinity for the win. Spacer blocks. Yeah, if it's on the way, like if it's an hour away and it's on the way to something, then yeah, I would I would go ahead and go. But if it was an hour away, like if I had to go into Raleigh and, and I wasn't uh I didn't need to go into Raleigh for anything, uh Amazon would be bringing it to me. I don't go into the I don't go into Raleigh unless I have to anymore just because of the traffic and the stupid people. Unfortunately I've had to for work. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna push down. And go ahead and get your your knob started. And I'm not going to push down way too hard because I need to get all three of them started. If you get one down real hard, it makes the rest a little bit harder to get. So push that down and get your knob started. And one more on the other. The reason you put those lock nuts in there is so the screws won't turn as you're trying to tighten up the um, bed screws from the bottom. So then what I like to do is just kind of crank down on them, get them nice and tight, and then I'll be able to adjust them up and down based on the height of my tool head. Let's try and work them all around and get them nice and tight. Now I got that and the, the tighter you get your springs, the easier it is to level the bed, I'll say. Send you some deer jerky. Yeah, I've, I've still got, I didn't get a deer this year, but I still have plenty of deer from uh, last year. So, should be doable. So I haven't made any deer jerky yet. You see everybody else's jerky. Okay. Now what I want to do is remove this and let this fall down. Not fall down, but slowly go down until it hits the end stop. Right, so it's hitting the end stop. Now I want to look and see. And yes, I still have clearance underneath all of my screws. From where that end stop is. Now the other thing that I want to look at is I'm going to move this sort of right in the middle and I'm going to raise this up. And what I want to do is you see if I can give a, a little bit of a tilt angle here. Okay so when I go all the way down I've hit the end stop and I still have clearance underneath all of my screws. I also have a little bit of play still down here in the uh, barrels, right? Now, if I go all the way up, the question is, is do I hit the top, which I just bottomed out against the top with the bearings, but did I get there with my hot end and I still have a ways to go well, no. Well, dude, that's actually perfect. I got maybe like a quarter to a half millimeter 
of space left to go on the bed when the nozzle touches. And that is perfect because I don't have a sheet on yet. And that's what I was looking for is whether or not I needed to move these um, LM8 UU bearings up or down some to be able to get the nozzle to touch the bed. So I'm just going to let that sit down. Okay. It's back down on the ground. Now, the other thing that we need to do is figure out our bed wires. So we know that they're going to be extra long, but we need to make sure, go ahead and give us a three stack here so that we can raise it way up. We need to make sure that they stay away from these belts. So I can't really route them this way. I guess I could have if I route them down the other channel and locked them in over here. But what I also have to be able to do is this has to be able to move up and down freely. So one of the things I can do is I can put a screw in here and kind of do the same type of thing where we um, yeah, where we just kind of do a captivate or a captive here around that screw, and that will allow us to basically make sure the bed moves up and down without binding. That may cause some issues with that. What if we can, if we bring it down here, if we make these screws pop out a little bit, is there a way that we can? Once again, that would be the topmost travel. And as it comes down, we need to be careful that we don't pinch it or something else. So we'll need to find some way of guiding that down and around. I want to say that, um, Uh, zombie actually join these two together so that allowed it to go up and down and it stayed off those belts yeah I think that's what we'll wind up doing is we'll just join those two together we'll run the run the power for the bed down that same way now, I also want to say that he did a zip tie maybe right around here to keep the wires in one place. Probably going to do that as well. And let me grab some bigger zip ties. Oh, oh yeah, um, you got to be careful and trust the people that are hunting on your land. Um, and yeah, they have to, they have to understand which species are protected. Because like if you, if you shoot a Canadian geese down or a goose down here and it's not currently in season or you don't have your migratory bird stamp or something like that, they will come after you. So by 
zip tying this over here that will keep that wire over to that side. I can bring this over and do it there, and it should keep it out of the belt as it goes up and down. We'll just give it a little bit of play there. And we'll add these to the final down here. Tilt this back forward so we can go back to things wiring. After so we have MS. This is a cute little printer, but it, it is fun to wire up just because of the size and everything. Do that and we'll bring our side back up. Now that we've got our last set of wires in here. Go ahead and tighten it. There we go. So our wires are, are captive there. Still has plenty of room to go up and down. We're not binding on anything, top or bottom. So that'll be it. Um, we do need to Trip wires on to our bed thermistor, and we'll go ahead and bring those kind of down and around the stack. We'll figure out about where we need them. A little bit of extra length that we can push to the side. And we'll cut these off. And then these, one, never know when you need extension wires or any wire. Just keep the little wire scraps. And every so often, just go and get crazy and do a purge of your wire if you haven't used it forever today. And of course, chances are, right after you purge your wire, that's when you'll, you'll be like, oh, I need one of those again. Um, so we got our wire strippers and our PA09 strippers. And when you're doing JST connectors, you do not need a large amount of wire showing out the end. In fact, you want very little, probably about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Love doing these thermistor wires because they're coated with, I don't know if they're PTFE coated or what, that's what they feel like. And they're, they're always hard to strip because of it. Hard to get a grip to strip the end. And this is the kit I use. I got it off of Amazon. I've got a couple of different ones, but it's got your pens, your, I guess these become your male or female. I don't know. I think these are your male ones. The other ones are female ones. You would solder on to one end, and then you've got the female side. So this is what I use to, to do my crimps, JSTs, and these things are a pain in the butt because they're small and I don't have like three or four of them. Yeah, so 
Yeah, that's the thing is the coyotes will reproduce as long as the food source is around. You know, the, the coyotes are going to grow to the food source. In the case of the food source, it's going to be your livestock or, you know, the, the wild game that's on your property. Um, I always do these. Try and do one crimp and then re crimp to the I always wind up pulling these. Or it turns so I can see again. But then on these super, super thin wires, I find every time I try and crimp the back part around the insulation that they wind up doing something funky. So I trim those back legs just a bit so that um, it just gives me a better crimp. If I don't, then it winds up, one always goes high, one goes low, and then it gets janky and it's always like to get it's just easier to trim those the back legs just a little bit. And then you come in with your PA connectors and you go to the next size up that you used for your PA. Also found to do a slow crimp normally gives me better luck trying to do a quick jam oyster What I need to do probably, if this all works out, is I just need to do all my crimping on stream because that way I get them all right the first time and I don't have a bunch of extra crimps. Hey, Royal Nomi, how are you doing today? Doing good? Hey, Yard Demon. I bet you had some Yard Demons out there, didn't you, Westry? Yeah, four, five, or six pin jays. I will use four because I use those when I when I change the links on the motor wires. But five and six, like the only six pins that we that we use in this hobby are the motor side themselves, and they are smaller than the standard JST. They're like the smaller pitch and everything. So, first part you're crimping is just on that bit of wire that you had stripped. And I kind of re-squeeze them just to tighten them up just a little bit, especially when you're trying to go into the last two um, crimp holes on here. If you don't, um, it stands a big chance of rotating one side or the other on you, and you'll get a failed crimp. Feels good. And then once again, just going to trim the legs that go over the insulation just a little bit because I know if I don't, 
you ever get a really good crimp on the on the on the smaller wires. If it's a bigger wire, like a um, like an 18 or a 16 gauge, that's fine. But on these smaller wires, this is like a 24. I, I never have good luck at getting a good crimp if I don't trim those wires. going against the natural bend of the wire. Into the JST. Well, Nomi, we are in the wiring up stage. And on the last couple of connectors, what I just did here was the connectors for the bed thermistor. And now I need to get those down in there. Move some things around and up. Lock stand up. And our hotbed thermistor is all the way on the right on this top row. The one all the way on the right, so just to the um, it's the last connector on. And we're in. So once again, what we're doing here is basically um, fan one is the heart cooling fan. Fan two is our hot end cooling fan. Fan three is the one on the side here that's going to apply cooling to the boards. We just put in our thermistor for the hot bed. We got our thermistor for the end we are not using an x or y end stop so we do have jumpers on the x and y diag pins for um, sensorless homing we do have a z end stop we are not using the rgb or the e0 end stop this would be to add lights and this would be to add um you know you use your e0 end stop if you had like a filament sensor okay um, our power is going to be top left. The next one we're going to do is our heat bed wires. We already have our hot end wires in. Um, we will not use the laser or the USB connection because we are connecting via the dedicated um, connector for the Raspberry Pi. And this connector can run any of the Raspberry Pis. So we're going to we're using the Raspberry Pi Zero W. But you can use it to run a Pi, uh, what, Pi 2A, Pi 2B, 3A, 3B, 3B plus, or a 4. Because it's providing two 5 volts, so you're using both 5 volt inputs, the ground, and then your transmit receive for your, um, your conversation. Once again, our motor wires are E, the extruder, X. In this case, that's the back left motor or the B motor. Y is the back right motor or the A motor. And then Z can go into either one because these two are parallel connections. So we're on our last connector now, which is for the heated bed. We're just going to kind of bring around here. See what kind of look that is. 
and go ahead and cut our wires a bit extra. And these wires use a fiberglass um, insulation. So, you know, I'm not going to say put on a protective mask and be careful of that. Just be careful that. When you when you strip the wires, it tends to fray. Is where I was going to go with that. So you just want to make sure that when you're stripping your wires, um, and these should be an 18 gauge. You want to make sure that you give it a good amount because we're going to be putting it into a ferrule. And if you want, open up your ferrules. And they're different color codes, so I believe this is going to be the 18 gauge, so we're going to be looking for the red ones. And what we'll do is we'll just test fit one of those over the sheathing, make sure that it'll go on there. If it does great. If it doesn't, and that's a fairly tight fit, which is fine, so these should be, these should be fine. Um, if not, then it'd be a 16 gauge. And that would be our black ferrule. The gauge you're looking for is really the wire, but you also want to make sure that it's going to be able to go whatever insulation material you have. So, <coughs> sorry. Once again, we know that we're going for 18 gauge. And if you're looking at how long that ferrule is. Right, so you can take that ferrule, kind of find out about how long it's going to be, put your thumb there. And that's about where you want to go in with your strippers. And what I normally do on these is I uh, bite it in, open it, I turn it 90 degrees, I'm lined up, and then I bite it again and pull it off. And that gives me the cleanest edge here. If you just if you just crimp down and then strip, what's going to happen is at the at the ends of that strip connection, you're going to pull fibers out. And that's that's the part that gets to be a pain in the butt. And I'll show you on this next one. So I'm just going to bite and pull. And I just made a liar out of me that are cabling. Normally these sheaves, they will, you'll leave fibers and then what you wind up having to do is get your flush uh, cutters and you basically have to pull those fibers down on the edge and then get right up close and cut those off because you don't want those fibers possibly getting in and causing an issue with the barrel. And I always apply just a little bit of a twist to these ends so that when I apply the ferrule, one, it's easier to get the, the wires into the center, and then I twist in that same direction as I bring the ferrule down, go over the... Insulation. You may notice that my wires are just a little bit proud. No big deal. No big deal at all because once we crimp these, we can always go back and trim off that little bit of excess. So you've got a special barrel crimper here, which will give you that square end. You're just going to put that in up to where the insulation starts. And just give it a crimp. It's a ratcheting design. So you pop off and you have a nice set of crimps there. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and crimp the other one and then I'll get the uh, garbage can up here and I'll trim off that extra. And this is another pack that I got off of Amazon. And it's good. It gives you plenty of different 
connector sizes to work with. I probably won't use any of the big sizes, but it's it's always nice to have in case I am trying to repair something around the house and need a larger size. I'll have it. And the preference is to cut off any tip that may be tinned, meaning a lot of the um, Creality machines, rather than using the ferrules, they'll have, uh, they'll just have added solder to tend the ends of the wire. And that's very, 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 very bad for things that heat up and cool off because that solder can melt if you get a, um, any type of surge or anything, that solder can melt and then cause an arc. So you always need to trim back those wires some to get away from those soldered ends. Now, if you get a tend copper core wire, then you will have tinning, but it's tinning on each individual wire in the core, and that's fine um, because you're not going to have that, that problem. Um, but this is the kit that I've got. It's... Presova, Precova, I don't know how you said it, but this came off of Amazon, and I've been using this for just about every printer that's in my possession right now, and some that have gone beyond my possession. So definitely, um, you know, something to get would be a, a nice barrel kit like that. Once again, I'm just going to make sure that these are tight. Cut these off. Off. I'm just going to make sure that I have you know, some strain relief on the wires. The wires aren't getting pulled out of whack. Go ahead and lock this one down. Off. Cut this one off. It's nice and tight. Once again, the one here around the bed is providing strain relief for the bed wire. Um, you need to tighten this top one up. Shouldn't be more wires going to that one. Give that a trim. And we need to trim the little phrase off the end of this. So definitely get it over your garbage can, get your cut lined up, and then point it down so that when you cut, it should all go into your garbage can and doesn't get all over your electronics you have near. Same thing for the other one. Now these ferrules on these connectors are a little long. So I'm going to leave this up here because what I want to do is bring my cables down and around, kind of follow that same guide around the back of the motor, just to kind of keep things neat and tidy. Um, I'm going to bring these around now that they're out of the way, so I'm not going to pinch any of the wires and stuff. And I bring these around and I stick them in. What I'm going to do is see how far they stick out, um, because I may need to trim these down so they stick way down like I did before. Bring those around, stick them in there. Now we can first. Okay, now you see, I have to bring you guys in here. Okay. 
So on, on the hot end wires, which are a smaller gauge wire, there's a little bit sticking out, not too much. On these larger wires, that's fully bottomed out. See how much of the, the actual ferrule is still sticking out? To me, I mean, that's not too, too bad, but it still worries me a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim just a little bit off the end of the ferrule. And that will allow the, the insulated crimp piece to be up against the actual fitting. And that will pre prevent any chance for any arcing or anything that cause an issue. That's where I was talking about before about being to about needing to possibly trim the you know, ferrule connectors. Now that I've got it down there, I just have to trim it right into my hand. So what I'm going to do is your ferrule connectors, um, it, it gives you like little graduated points. All I'm going to do is trim off that last point where it crimped. It's going to go right into my hand and be careful. If you don't have um, safety glasses, please get some safety glasses. Doing something like this. I mean, I'm wearing glasses, so that should be good. Just line that up in that last groove and snip it off. And so we're really not snipping off much. We're just snipping off that last um, little groove piece. Um, here, let me bring you guys back in and show you what I'm out there by groove piece. So you see on the ferrule, get the camera. You see those vertical lines on the ferrule? Those are part of the crimp. So all I did was line my snips up at that first vertical line on the end and just cut the end short. Hey, John Strand, how are you doing today, sir? Hopefully everybody's doing good. Um, so now that I've got these shortened up a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and get these in there for the heat bed. And you see how that tightens everything up and makes it a lot nicer and no chance for any parking or whatnot. Go ahead and put the second one in. And once again, when you, when you do these connectors, um, when you crimp your ferrules, they, it makes it like a square. So it makes it easy to get into your um, Ports, but you do have to make sure that they're opened up far enough to allow them to go. Go ahead and crimp those down on there. Do the little pull test. Make sure that they're not going to sneak out on you. And then the only thing left that we have to do is power. And wow, you guys way out of whack here. Okay. So we went ahead and got our hot bed wires in. Now the only thing we have left is power, which is gonna go into this top connector and it's going to come from this connector here. So what I'm gonna do is grab some wire, cause I didn't grab any wire. And this is going to be a DC connection. Might need anything like stupid crazy, we don't need you know, like a 14 or 16 gauge wire like you would use on an AC connection. Um, we're going to go with some 18 gauge silicone wire. And because we're dealing with positive and negative, I'm going to use black and red. And we don't need a lot. So I'm just going to unwind a little bit to kind of see about how much I would need. Go 
once I swim one, I can just use that as the length to trim the other one. Eventually, I'm going to have to switch over and start going international standard with like blue and yellow. But Once again, these are just standard wire packs you can get off of Amazon or wherever. Um, can go kind of crazy and go get, you know, PTFE wiring and, and 18 and 24 gauge from, you know, your standard boron vendors, but I really don't think that's necessary for a printer of this size. Um, Zombie may, since he's running uh, 200 watt, well, 100 watt bed heater and 100 watt hot end. We'll probably need a little bit bigger, and I'm going to have to pull these back out. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put ferrules on both ends of this now. And once again, we're going to use. This is 18 gauge wire, so we're going to use the red 18 gauge ones again. I'm going to put both ends. Gauge. And I'm not going to pull off as much because I know that I'm probably going to have to trim the end anyhow. Get a little bit nicer fitment. the wire, push the end, push the barrel on there, make sure it's all the way down against the wire installation, I always tend to try and push the wire in to make sure it's good up against there, and give it a squeeze. Do the pull test, and we're good. Next one, same way. In there, push the wire down, make sure I've got good connectivity, and squeeze. Pull test. Now, once again, knowing is how I just use these connectors and I had to trim a piece off, we will take and trim okay. We will trim the last section off here, which is very minor. We will trim that last little piece off just to make sure that we get good seating in both sides of the connectors. Same thing to our black wire. Twist the strands. Go on and twist it down as you go. Thank you, John Strand, for the looky loo. Um, what are you working on today? Anything, anything fun? Um, working outside on this nice day, trying to get either things cleaned up from the storms, or I know Mrs. Dragon's waiting for me to get done so she can go put me to work in the yard. Apparently, I got like six blueberry bushes to plant, and we're gonna go recover several wild blackberry bushes from across the street before they clear cut that lot for somebody to build. All right, so we have those two wires ready. Always, always, always get these things closed up as quickly as possible. I actually tend to pull the right number out and then close it back up because I am the guy that will knock it off the bench and now I'm, now I spend a couple of hours sorting and putting everything back in. So 
want to say that this set was $25, $30, not that big of a deal. Um, and looking at our, let's put it up here. Looking at our guide, our pinout guide, we know that ground is towards the bottom and power is up at the top. So we'll go ahead and put in those sides first. And once again, I know that we're going to want to trim that final edge off of these. So let's go ahead and get that done. Probably going to do it on both sides just to be safe. Because I don't know how deep the connector Okay. It's done. We'll grab So once again, round was the bottom connector in this orientation. I'm just gonna take black wire and get it in there. Get it all the way. Good. And then power. We got that one down. Now, I do have another one of these connectors, but what I'm going to do just to make sure I, I get it in the right spot is I'm just going to undo the clamp. Pull that out so I can work on it easier. And looking at the light, positive is on, whoop, the positive is on the side towards me. Negative is on that side. That's how I need to wire this up. Screw out and we're going positive, which is wire. And I'm not sure if you can see that that went in all the way in that plastic red plastic insulating sheet is right up against it. So good. Down. One. Sheet also right. Back of the barrel connector. Both of them give them a good tug, both of them good and dirty in there. So we're just going to take that and stick it back in for the clamp. And tighten our clamp back down. And we should be all done. We are wired up. Once again, we've got, we're just going to roll around and do a little look-see. We've got our power connector for our Raspberry Pi, and we've already had the Raspberry Pi going and know that we're talking correctly to the Pico. We've got our extruder motor, our X, Y, and our Z motors all connected. We've got our button and our bed heater and our power connectors. Um, going. We've got our Z end stop and it's checked to correct pin out. We have our X and Y end stops are empty and the jumpers are on the board. 
so that we can do sensorless homing on X and Y. And then we have our bed thermistor and our hot end thermistor. We have fan one, which is the arc cooling fan, fan two, which is our hot end cooling fan. And then fan three, which is the one on the side here to provide cooling for the We've got some extra cable. Like we said, we'll, we'll do some cable cleanup here in a little bit, um, probably off stream. We've got all of our wires in. They're, they're generally run so that they're out of the way. So now it's a matter of setting our printer upright. And what I'm gonna do is just bring the excess cables to the back and plugging in our power supply. Now, these power bricks that I'm using, they do come with that DC connector that I showed you that we just connected. Um, and that's nice because it gives you an, an easy mount point. And this is a, I'm not sure if it'll show on the screen, but it's a 24 volt, 8 amp. That gives us 192 watt output which should be perfectly fine for this heater or for this uh, printer on everything. And do those. Get plugged in here. Probably put this back on its end so that we can check for any blue smoke. Maybe in this process. I think we're getting any blue smoke, but you never know. So I can set that down. And yeah, I'm, I am kind of slow rolling this because it's kind of getting close to a moment of truth time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on its side so that we have access and can see all of our connections down there. Got up, pull these down so that we can see all of our lights. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and apply power. Now there is no power switch on this. Um, what I can potentially do is wire in a power switch as well. So I, I might find a mount for a power switch that'll go on the side, but I'll come out of here, the ground to go all the way to the ground and then the power will go to the switch. I'll have switched power. That'll probably be something else that I'll add to this printer down the road. Now we're just going to plug it in and get lights on our Pico. And we're getting lights on our Raspberry Pi Zero. That's good. We, we've, I see no smoke from anything, which is good. And the next step is we're gonna give that just a couple of seconds. You see, I'm gonna slide that over just a bit. What I want to do is move my keyboard and we're going to log it. I'm going to switch over to the browser. You'd think I would. Oops. Oh. 
Hey, I'm back. How's it going? Um, so what we've got here is our web browser window. most second I keep the window big without losing. I guess the other thing I can do chat for screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is log in to the interface. I'm trying to remember what IP I assigned to the rest. And we are up. There's not ready. This is Gold Dragon, the run mark one. Start. Look at our config, and I just want to double check a couple things in here. So we've got our main cell requirements, which are path for our G codes. We have exclude object. What this will do is if you have your slicer set to identify all the various objects in your print, if you have multiple objects in your print, then what this will allow you to do is if one starts to break loose or one is failing, you can exclude that from the print in the print itself and it or in the main cell interface itself, and it will start skipping that object and it'll continue to print the rest. So that's a pretty good way of you know, if you've got multiple parts printing at the same time, you can save all of them right. Yeah, that, that's the big thing, Chewy, with um, tend wires is, one, the solder itself can melt, but yeah, as it heats up and goes through heating and cooling cycles, it, it, the solder itself will soften, and it allows the compressed tension that you have on that wire to release some tension because um, the wire will flatten out more as it goes through those heating cycles and the wire will become loose and actually pull out or move and cause it. Sorry, just now. Um, so back up, whoop, back over here on our printer. Um, you need to have the respond. When I, second. We'll see. We'll have to come back. Maybe it's just that Clipper itself wasn't fully up. Um, we have our kinematic set. And basically what I did was I took the, the 
HIPAA firmware that they have developed for the SKR Mini E3 V3 and just ported everything over to a um, an SKR Pico blank config template. So the velocities, the max velocity and everything is set directly from Rolahan's firmware as it comes. But really the differences are the step pins, the dir pins, so any of the pin assignments are different. Micro steps were still set to 64. That's how we're getting his. We'll see if that works. If not, we will back those off to 32. Um, that may come into play if we start seeing some skipping, maybe because the Raspberry Pi Zero can't keep up with the calculations because of the processor. So we may have to step that down to 32. These would be our A and B motors. Um, Z motor is a belted Z. I'm used to using like screw screw stuff. So once again, I followed along with what he did here. Um, the end stop position is currently set at 12, max position of 115. I may need to actually measure that. So what I'm going to do real fast. while we have this up before I go wonky is I'm going to move the bed slowly because we now have our motor connected and our port energized. I just want to move the bed slowly all the way up to the top. Oh, I just hit the hot end. But I have, like I said, about a millimeter left of space on the actual element. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and measure the distance from bottom of the bed to where the, um, excuse me, not the bottom of the bed, the bottom of the, of the bed carriage to our end stop. And that's going to give me a rough estimate for whether or not that 112 is going to be good or cause me. That should be good. If anything, I'm more at 115. So yeah, that, that should be good so that I won't have any problems. So if, if the distance is off because I'm using a different end stop in a different location for the end stop, if I set that too high, because we are zeroing on the, at the lowest end of travel, and I tell it, okay, you're home, now you're at 120, um, it's going to try and go to zero when I try and um, set the distance to the, or my Z offset. When I, so when I home, it's gonna to go to the right back, the bed's gonna go all the way down. When I go to print, it's gonna to wanna to go to zero, which would be all the way up Oh, and if I have it set at say 120, but I only have 115 millimeters of space, it's going to drive into the bed. So that's what we're trying to keep from doing is damaging the bed. So now what I'm gonna do, since we are up and good for now, I'm going to flip this back up on its feet. Let's again, pull our extra wires through the back wires through the back so that they're not hanging out the front, showing off its badness. And we're going to continue to go through um, and check our print file. Let me see that. So we're just going to continue to dig through here a little bit. So saying our position in stop is 112 and our max is 115 that would give us should give us about three millimeters to go into the negative um when we when we're running our thing so 
112, it'll come up to zero, which should still give me a gap between the bed and the nozzle. Then I can go negative to set my Z offset, bring the nozzle right to the bed. So we should be good there. Um, homing speed is 10, so it's slow. We might be able to speed that up, but always, always, always go slow for your initial homes. The other thing is on the X and Y, you'll notice that the end stop is set to the uh, TMC 2209 Stepper X virtual end stop. So that's telling it that we're using a virtual end stop. And because we've added the driver SG threshold of 90, that's what's setting up our sensorless homing. So that's where we'll be using our sensorless homing. Hey, Darth Gollum, how are you doing? And I'm not even sure. Darth G40 Jedi. Hello, how is, how's it going? Or is that your emoticon that did not show up? Anyhow, hello Darth Gollum, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we've been working on wiring up the Rook Mark One. Um, we've got the wiring done. We've got somewhat strain relief and bundled together, though not beautiful yet. We'll make it beautiful off stream. Um, I do have the build plate in, the hot end all wired up. We've got our ETFE tube in place. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are under power right now. So all we're doing right now is, oh, soaking in some sun. Awesome. I have a feeling I'm going to be forced to do that later when uh, Mrs. Dragon says, stop playing with the printer. It's time to go plant trees. Um, well, we're just going through the initial config that was set up. Um, basically, I took the Rolahan baseline firmware config for the uh, SKR Mini E3 V3 and applied all of those settings to the uh, SKR Pico baseline config. So I had all the right pinouts. Then I just went and added all the, the other parameters. Um, now, one thing when you're doing your sensorless homing, if you change your homing speed, in this case for the X, it's 40. If I adjust that homing speed, it will change the centralist homing threshold that we'll have to set down here at the driver SGTHRS um, down this line here. Um, because they're coupled together, if you go faster or slower, it will change the thresholds um, because it's going to hit differently on the side. And that's what you're trying to do is adjust speed and, and sensitivity as it hits the side. So we may have to adjust those as we go, um, but these are the default parameters put in from Rolahan's config. Um, like I said, the Z, we're gonna go a lot slower. We just, just do a, a measurement to make sure that we didn't have too much um, bed travel between where the end stop and the max position is. So we did go ahead and check that. The, for no reason. the the stepper um all of the stepper run currents are currently set to 0.5 we may have to adjust those as well as we go through this process the extruder i'm gonna have to make some changes here um, i am using the bmg clone and i'm just going to adjust it based on some uh, we're gonna drop that down to 32 micro steps. Our rotation distance to start, we're going to do 22.172. Our gear ratio is 50 to 17. We are using a 1.8 motor, so we should have 
200 steps for the rotation per or steps per rotation, 32 micro steps, rotation distance, and gear ratio. Once again, we will go through and recalculate our rotation distance once we actually get, um, you know, we'll, we'll put some filament in uh, once we start getting ready to print. And we will actually do the measurement of the filament like we would normally do. Um, you know, we will have a link sticking out. We'll mark it. We'll run a hundred um, millimeters through. We'll mark it again. We'll we'll lift it up some. We'll measure it, see where we're at, and make the adjustments as necessary. Um, sensor type based on the. Yes, I, I set these because they're the Creality C or excuse me, the Revo CR does use a different heat element if you get it brand new out of the box because they are made to be drop in replacements for um, the Creality that would require no firmware changes. So it does use the generic 3950 thermistor for that hot end. If you're running a Revo of any other flavor, it will be a different thermistor. I believe it's the 104 NT Simtech. So you just need to be cognizant of that because you will get skewed values if you use the wrong thermistor sensor setting. So just be aware, aware of that. They have to change them just because we're using the same stepper motor. Two heater bed is set up based on the one that I am using on B0 since it's exact heater bed set up. We have our hot end fan once again, plug GPIO 18 double quick. We'll quadruple check that the hot end fan IO 18 is fan 2, and that is what we set it up to be. So that's right. Next fan would be the part cooling fan in fan 1. Yeah. Then fan 3 would be the controller fan. Those are set up right. We're going to pull the readings for the temperature from the Raspberry Pi, the MCU, or excuse me, the SKR Pico, and the Raspberry Pi. Safe home position is X max, Y max. Um, with a Z hop, we don't probe for Z on the safe home. Screws adjust capability. And we do have RGB set up here. This was just the standard NeoPixel setup. We don't have anything plugged into it. That's good. We'll do a save and restart and see. Is... Oh, no, I swear I had these two boards talking to me. Up and it was well, it was throwing the air because there was no thermistor. Okay, so. What, what, uh, hybrid robotics, which, uh, extruder hot end combination was that? And is it, is it a, I'll say it, a uh, more direct mount where the extruder and the hot end are, are boom right there? Or do you have a little bit of PTFE tube between the two? What I'm going to try and do real fast is see if there's any updates that need to be run.
one. It's over on the side real fast and check something. What I'm double checking is there is a jumper on the SKR Pico board that you have to put in if you're running it off of USB supply, which is what I did need to do initially when I was bring it. Um, and then you have to take that jumper off and make sure I took that jumper off because it will register power, but it won't. Um, it won't actually boot the SKRP on there. It does look like there's a few clipper updates. So we will go through and do those. And the way I always do it is I start at the bottom and work my way up. Can't hit the update all, but there's a couple of times where I've done that, and I don't know if it does it in a weird order, and it winds up messing up things for me. So we're just going to run through and do some updates and see if that brings it back for me. Yeah, hybrid, hybrid robotics, if you're there. Um, you said you found a tiny blockage between your extruder gear or the filament goes in the hot end. Which extruder hot end combination is that? Oh, oh yeah. Gotcha. And there is, I mean, there there's a, a, a throat or a gap between the extruder gears and the actual hot end itself, the hot end thread itself, right? And, and that does suck because I've had filament break on the Ender 3, which has got a Sherpa Mini going into the Micro Swiss, and there's a gap, you know, probably about an inch and a half inch gap um, where it goes through a PTFE tube. And it if it snaps in there, you wind up taking like the whole hot end apart. And I know on the focus, it's pretty much it. You got to take the whole dang thing apart to get. Okay, it was an Amazon. So did it come that way? Or were you running it and it broke in there? Because that's probably, that could have been a reason why somebody returned it. And I love when that happens because you get a great deal on it. And it's really the, the person that got it didn't know how to troubleshoot it. And like I said, you wind up getting a really good deal on a printer that way. Those are done. Let's see. Yeah, the one thing I'm a little not necessarily hesitant on, the one thing I got to double check and figure out. Um, before I try and run like a banana pie in here is the uh, UART communication for it. I'm sure that people have done it, so I just need to go and find to see if there's some other setting in Linux I need to set up for it. Should hopefully be a little bit faster on that. And I will say on those banana pies, I mean, it was working. It was on the network. I was able to do... Um, 
you know, pseudo apt update and, and pseudo apt upgrade. But as soon as I tried to install, like I downloaded Kiel and did the git clone to download Kiel, but as soon as I tried to run and do any installs through Kiel, it just timed out and died because the, the wireless doesn't have enough oomph. You have to get an external intent for those. And I ordered some online once I figured out what the right connector was going to be for it. It's the UCF or something like that style connector. And once I put that on there, I mean, it came up and was lightning fast on installing main sale and all. So I'm really, really interested because, like I said, it's four screws and one connector. The Raspberry Pi comes out, and I can put the other one, in, you know. Check it out and see how it runs. Runs it any better. Okay, you may also replace the side end. Yeah. Yeah, any of those V-Wheel printers, either you have to tighten them or loosen them based on whoever had it before because, they, yeah, it's, it's always best to try and adjust them. Um, so one thing to note, Ivory Robotics, and I believe Chewy was interested in this as well. So Evil Diesel, I had gotten him a Focus. And he's already run through multiple ribbon cables on that printer because they just, the ribbon cables stink. Um, I, unless they're the thicker ribbon cables that I've seen on I think it's some of the Anacubic machines, those really thin ones like that that look almost like the Raspberry Pi camera type ribbon cables, it's just, they're not made. To move and and you'll get random breaks and then you'll start getting random things so evil diesel is designed a whole new hot end and it's designed around a um micro swiss direct drive extruder setup and a revo micro how he has it set up right and he got rid of all the ribbon cables and he's traced all of them back and he's going to go to a standard umbilical wiring kind of like an ender and i think that's going to be a lot more um robust long term especially with the cables and not having any breaks in the cable stuff why are we Connecting via DMA. Restart methods command. Did have these talking, talking thermal air. Yeah. Um, so you'll see them on here as. Evil Diesel underscore Inc. Uh, is an INC. Um, and he is also on Discord, I believe, is an some flavor of Evil Diesel as well. Um, you'll see him over on uh, West Reach channel and Subsector occasionally as well. He's not on today because he's doing a, uh, running a D&D &D game at his house. And Interestingly enough, um, I gave him an old, I want to say it was like a 32-inch TV. He's completely taken it out of the case, and we have printed new mounts for it. And so he's got the LCD that's raised off, off the table and secured down with these mounts with a sheet of plexiglass over the top of it, and he's running it as his um, D&D board table right now 
So as the game master, he can sit there with his iPad and actually run the game. And he's got it set up so that like you can only see 60 feet ahead of you. So you don't see the whole map and it actually expands as you move. And if you come up to like a door, you can only see up to the door. You won't see through the door until you open the door and stuff like that. Really awesome setup. Um, so yeah, really cool. Yeah, he's the Evil Diesel Inc. So why is my Pico not talking? Not doing zero. We do have it set for dev TTY AMA zero. Double for some reason I may not have All right, Chewy, got any ideas for me? Awesome, thanks, Hybrid Robotics, that's awesome. Appreciate it. Checking in during spring break. Oh, gotcha, where are you spring breaking at? Got it set up for cereal. Talking cereal. You are connected.
removed. <clears throat> what I just did was make sure that the serial connection for the Raspberry Pi enabled. One thing I didn't think of is to why it wouldn't be working. Where it was working before when I had Okay, hi, hi, uh, okay, hybrid robotics. Enjoy your day. Um, yeah, if you're if you're back again, and I'm still running. Uh, then we should have something going on the printer. I do want to try and push plastic today, so this is a tad bit annoying that the uh, printer is not working at the moment. So. Host software is a Please return. Whatever reason, all of a sudden it's now not blockable. Or just annoying. Any issues with power? Uh, let's set it back up so we should have plenty of juice because this is a 100, 192 watt power supply so we should have plenty of juice to be running everything we'll do that we'll come over here Destin, Florida being summoned down to the beach well you go enjoy the beach do not let me keep you from the beach there darling um, I, I'm born and raised in Florida. Go enjoy it. Because this was a a uh, main sale Raspberry Pi great image, so jump through here real fast to see if there's something missing. Microcontrollers flashed. Let me rephrase that. The microcontroller should be flashed. Because I had flashed firmware onto it before, so it should still have type of firmware on the controller. Hey, Titans Revenge, how are you doing today? Thanks for showing up. Um, so we have our, um, our Rook Mark 1 set up and configured here. Um, everything mechanically is done. I still need to throw a build plate on here. Let me go grab one. Luckily, I've got like five, five for B0, so I got the nice uh, B0 build plate with the Boron and OVO. 
textured both sides. And I did put some screws in the back here so that you have something to push the plate up against. So that's set up. Uh, what we're having problems with right now is clipper. For whatever reason, on the bench top, um, before I had everything connected on the bench, I had the Raspberry Pi Zero W talking to the um, SKR Pico board. But now, for whatever reason, we are getting blocked with the, uh, we're taking an error. Yeah, the, oh, well now we got a different, okay, MCU unable to connect, one center line issue, firmware restart command. So what we were getting before was the standard Clippy error where it couldn't talk. Yeah, you know, this is what we were getting before. Clippy host software is attempting to connect. Please retry in a few moments. And we're not getting Clippy to connect. So I was pretty sure that I had um, oh, what am I thinking of? He's, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'd already um, flashed firmware to the SKR Pico board in the past. It is possible that I may just be smoking something and don't remember it. Um, yeah, so this is the Rolahan Rook Mark I. It is a mostly printed 3D printer. So all of the printed parts you see here are printed in PLA Pro, um, and that includes the fan shroud and all. Um, it uses a B0 size build plate, so 120 by 120. It doesn't have to be heated. Um, you can just use plexiglass mounted directly to the, the bed carriage um, if you wanted to, and just go with a non-heated bed. I am using a V0 bed heater and a uh, Novo heat pad underneath and standard boron build plate on it. Um, we are running under the rookery here. We are running a um, Revo CR hot end, 24 volt. We've got dual 4010 blower fans providing uh, heart cooling and a single 3010 for um, pulling of the hot end. We're using a BMG clone extruder and all four of the motors are stepper online, you know, commodity Amazon specials. Um, yeah, like I said, the brains is an SKR uh, Pico board and a Raspberry Pi. So, Yeah, I could swear that these things were talking before. So about the only other thing I can do is I can tell you that mainsail and the Raspberry Pi is working. It's just not able to talk to the SKR Pico. And we do have this set up as a, um, whatchamacallit. We do have these connected in a serial fashion. So it should be using AMA. TTY zero um, using the powered connection. So we do have our printer config and clipper communication set up for serial dev TTY AMA zero for the York connection. That should be good. Like I said, the only other thing I think of at this point is maybe I did not. Um, flash the Pico firmware. So,
this way, so it has dual five volt for ground, then transmit receive. Pretty sure I did that, but let's uh, let's do it anyhow. I'm going to do this offline over on a different laptop rather than. Yeah, I just realized that the uh got the wrong camera on, but that's okay. Catch that password that thing. Yeah. Go back over here so you get Hey Agri Robotics. You got an hour before you need to be on another stream, okay. Now, are you a guest host or a guest on somebody else's stream, or are you, uh, or are you just watching another stream? All right, so we're logged in. Let's do the... Thing. Logged in, we need to go ahead and do our... Make menu directory. Enable extra low level. As per 40, looking at this, now this would set. So I'm wondering now if I just never loaded the microcontroller, that would be the perfect thing to do. Level 24. No bootloader offset. One. No set. So I need quit say make moderator gotcha. So once this makes done, I'm going to drop the file to this computer, and then I'm going to unpower the printer. Then I'm going to have to go get a USB A to S long enough.
Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to think because I need to be able to drop the file from computer to the Raspberry Pico chooses a USB C. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be. Some machinations. In case that, um, I know it's uh I'm just staring at me as I'm looking around but show too much of this. I'd like to show this, however. Um, I have not configured it to, I, I don't have my computer, my streaming computer configured to show things without showing everything, basically. Um, so what I did was I just shut down the just shut down the printers so can cover it off. Make sure that the Raspberry Pi shuts off cleanly. May have to toss a jumper on the Escar Pico to make sure it can power off the TV, and then I have to physically move closer to my computer. Which is why I'm going to put you all here right back screen momentarily while I physically move some things around to get it upload firmware file that I can. And I will be getting a much longer USB A USB C cable. I'll put you guys on the Be Right Back screen for a moment, and I'll be right back.
part about this game is in Oh, there we go. I think what the issue was is I didn't have the USB A die fully plugged in on the uh, or USB hub, so that was what was causing it to not do the connection to show up as a live letter. Hey, Waza77, thank you for coming in. Hyper Robotics, would you say it's worth getting an Inter 5 Plus over the Pro? I know you directed that to Hybrid Robotics. I will jump on that. I have an Inter 5 Plus. Um, the Pro and the, so the Ender 5 and the Ender 5 Pro gives you the same build plate as an Ender. So not that, I mean, it's 225 by 225. Thought I had this. But the Ender 5 Pro gives you, it's 370 by 370. I believe it's, they call it the build area 350 by 350. Um, it's it's a lot bigger if you're doing bigger prints it makes sense to get the the uh inner five plus especially if you can find if you're good at tinkering and you can find a used one on ebay and i say good with tinkering because you may have to you know find a couple of bolts to use to put the frame together or or be able to troubleshoot whatever the previous owner had done to it. Um, then I would go with the with the Ender Five Plus. I it's a great print, and especially if you have any aspirations of doing a zero G Mercury um, or Hydra build to it, which is a mod to the Ender Five chassis, I would definitely do the Plus um, rather than than anything else it's it's a beautiful printer and if you guys want to see um what's good about an inner five plus this just came off of my inner five plus that was um converted to a zero g right this is a Warhammer 40,000 Space Marines Chaplain helmet. Starting to print the accent pieces now for it. But if you want something that's going to be able to do helmets, you're going to want the Inner 5 Plus. Just saying, I'm probably a little bit biased though. Okay, so where were we? Um, so I finally got the Raspberry Pi Pico in boot burn mode. It is showing up as a drive letter on my um, computer. And all I'm going to do now is take that UTF file UF, UF2 file, the Clipper UF2 file from the mate that we just did on the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to drag that over onto that drive letter and it will put it on the board. It will reboot the board 
and it should come back up and have that um, of an info underscore uft dot text file there now, and we should be good to go. So should be able to eject that drive. Eject that drive. Okay, and I will drop off camera real fast to disconnect that and move it back up on the desktop, and we should hopefully be back up and right. PC cable, and we're just going to set, whoa, down the wrong direction. That out of the way, we're going to turn this back around, we're going to pull the excess cables out back, so that everybody will be able to see the work of art here. You're going to plug the power back in. Before we do that, I need to remove the boot jumper, put that back over on the Y, as well as remove the jumper. So if you're going to power it from USB, you have to jumper this. That tells it it's only going to get 5 volt USB power. Pull that. And I'm also going to plug the Raspberry Pi Zero back in. Head wires towards the top in this orientation. And a little extra wires coming out the back. We're going to plug in our power. Pull these wires out over the side. I'm just going to do this because with our extruder in the back, I'll need to run filament up through the back because I do want to see this print today, if at all possible. So now we're going to come back over here to our main sail. In sale to come back up. And it's slow. Hey, Daddy Wazzy, how are you doing? Thank you so much for raiding in with a party of four. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Thank you for coming over. Um, so, what we have right now is we've got our Rook Mark I. Uh, we, we've got everything mechanically fixed, uh, all the cabling and wires down. We've got our cables nice and done. We have the PTFE tube a little loose back right now because we're going to have to double check our steps once we get going. And we applied power and our Raspberry Pi Zero, which has clipper on it, um, was not able to talk to the MCU, which I thought I had previously um, flashed, but apparently it may have been the other Pico that I flashed, or I've just lost my mind. And now... We are connected. So we're connected. We are getting um, extruder temp and bed heater temps, which are really close together. So that's good. That means our, our sensors are reading and we picked the right um, 
harvester types for the sensors. Hey, Acetacraft, how are you doing? So glad that you're here. So glad that you are here. So we are going to be right back into the printer commissioning phase. So we've what we've got in here is a Revo CR hot end. Um, has never had filament, has never had power applied to it yet. So we have a Revo CR. We've got dual 4010 blowers, one down each side for park cooling, and a 3010 in the front for hot end cooling. Um, what you can see here is we are getting temperature readings for both the extruder and the bed thermistor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the extruder to heat up to 75. And we're gonna watch that heater go up we just saw that the right heater power went on and we are getting motion on our fan. We actually switch. Well, let me see if I can switch camera feeds here. I had a camera. All right, I'm going to jump some scenes real quick. So that did not find. Sorry, right, I'm going to jump around here. Try and just move some cameras around so that you can. So should now be hopefully getting a feed with web browser and the actual printer itself. Just a few seconds to light. So move this a little bit closer to the camera. So this fan down here is now spinning. So we told it to heat up to 75 degrees, which it did. And it's holding, which is good. And now we have the front fan that's spinning, which it should. Anytime I tell the fan to go above 50 degrees C, this fan should start spinning. Now, if I set this back to zero, as that fan cools down and it gets below 50 degrees Celsius for more than a couple of seconds, this front fan should then go off because we have it set to 50 degrees Celsius. That's just going to be our double check on this one to make sure that it's doing it. Oh, you didn't miss much, Chewy. You missed me fumbling around underneath the desk, which you didn't see anyhow because you were on the Be Right Back screen. But it, it helps if you actually push the connector all the way in because if it's two thirds of the way in, it'll get power to the board. But apparently, the I guess the data pins won't connect up because the power pins extend, which are the two outer ends, extend a little bit more than the data pin. So once you actually put the data pins all the way, then you can actually see the board as a drive, um, and then you can dump the firmware to it. So we got the firmware up and running, and the Raspberry Pi is now talking to the Pico because Pico has firmware. So we just checked the um, the hot end and made sure that the hot end heats up 
and that when I tell it to go over 50 degrees, the fan kicks on by default. Now, once we get below 50 degrees in temp, this front fan should kick off. Getting close. The other thing I'll do while we're here is just make sure that our blower fans actually kick on when I tell them to. And that front fan just kicked off because we dropped below 50 degrees Celsius. So that's good. That means our coating is working. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to tell our blower fans to kick in. And I do have a blower fan over here going. And the other side is going, and I'm getting some good airflow out the bottom. So we do have cooling fans. So that's that's good. So far, everything's checking out. Our wiring has been good. We're going to tell our heated bed to heat up a bit. Let's go to 40C. We just want to see if it kicks on and goes. Yeah, we are, we are getting there. All we're checking is that everything's coming up and running. Um, next up, we're going to do our stepper buzz. Yeah, so I set my hot end fans for temperature based. So if I tell it to go over, like when I tell it to heat up, it doesn't matter that it's under 50, the fan will kick on. And then as it's cooling down, once it gets below 50 C, the fan will shut off. So I have it set for temperature. And then normally the controller fan, which would be the one on the side here, I have set up um, so that whenever the heater kicks on, that controller fan should kick in. Just test. So I might have to go up above 40 because 40, I really can't feel the heat. I mean, it says it's on, but I just can't feel it. Okay, there it is. Here is definitely working. But my side controller fan, which is plugged into fan three, is not. That should be set to. Controller MCU. EPIO 20. We'll check that. I own 20, yes. Max power one kicking second hot in extruder. Yeah, it should kick on whenever the heated bed is told to turn on. It did not. Okay, set to, oh, that would be, is also set to extruder. Return. Restart. Now I'm going to tell the heated bed to heat up and my controller fan is now kicked in. So this fan down here is so all of my fans are working as expected.
then what I do is go to the Boron Design Documentation. Initial startup. And this is basically what I've been doing is running through these standard checks. So we're making sure that um, temperatures are working, that when we tell the heaters to heat up, the right heater heats up. We would do the, um, we need to do the stepper motor check. So we're going to do stepper buzz. We'll grab our stepper buzz and paste it in here. This is going to be for X. And it always goes in the positive, then the negative. So it should move one millimeter to the right and then back to the left. I'm just going to rest my finger on it. I'm going to send this command. And it is going to the right and then left. So it should be going in the right direction. So that's good. Okay. And then we're going to do the same command for stepper Y, which means it should go back, then forward, because it goes the positive direction and then the negative direction. Zero, zero is the front left. Get on chat. Stop. He stepped in the big guy, and I did. Okay, if that's the same guy that's on Boron, or I'm sorry, on the Clipper, then that's that's great. I'm. I just know that that's where to go to get it, and since this is basically same exact setup as a V0, then when you start looking at the core XY kinematics, if things move in the wrong direction, then you can easily go and look at the V0 diagram to make sure which way that the motor is going. So we're going to do the step of Y, and once again, it should go towards the back and then the front. So I'm going to hit send. It is going back to front back to front. So once again, we're going in the right direction on those two. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for Z. So I want to That's a little concerning that it's not Holding the Z up, but I want to I want to hold it off the end stop. Okay, and so my Z motor is going in the wrong direction because it's going up then down, up then down, and it should be going down, which would be positive, up, which is negative. As you can see, it just dropped as soon as the motors went off. So I need to double check some settings on that. So we'll go over to our printer config file. Oh yeah, definitely. If I, I'm with you there, Chewy, if if the documentation that's on the Boron site is just originally from the Clipper site then I want to definitely tell people, no, and it's, it's Clipper's Guide, and the Voron folks have just put a spit and polish into their manual so that it's all in one place so that you don't have to keep jumping around back and forth. Because same thing with all the Clipper install. They have theirs, and they say, go to Clipper if you want to do advanced features. So I'm cool with that. Yeah, hopefully you got that hot end clear. I, I know I've worked on the Focus a couple of times, and every time you have to do anything, you have to tear that whole hot end apart. And it's just 
Um, so we're coming in here. We know the Z was going in the wrong direction. So all we have to do is un is remove the um, exclamation point there for the direction, and boom, we just changed the direction. And that is why I love clip. Um, the other thing that we're going to do after I get past my OCD is the hold current. So we have a run current, and that run current held it in place. But you see we don't have a hold current set in here. And what that means is when it shuts off the motor, it goes to nothing, and it drops the bed, which will be bad, especially if it's at high, it'll drop all the way down and it'll bust our end stop. We want to add a hold current, hold underscore current, colon. Let's go ahead and do the 05 at the same time. And we'll do a save and restart. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this up. Once that printer is ready, well, I was hoping it would again. Be careful with that for the time. Um, so we did our, our steppers. In fact, let me raise that up just a little bit, and we're going to rerun that last stepper command. So it should go down, then up, which it is. It's down, up, down, up, down, up. And it does that, I think, 10 times. And I'm going to hold my finger underneath here to see if this hold current kicks in or if it drops the bin. Okay, and you saw it still drop the bed. I still need to figure out why it's doing that because I don't want to accidentally break the uh, um, break the end stop off because right now it's just being held on with BHBT. Um, but meanwhile, let's go ahead and I'm going to do stepper. Is it stepper E? Stepper E is true. Oh, it's true. So we're going to do the extruder as well. And what we're going to look for, and I'll move the printer around so that you guys can hopefully see this. We've got a little bit of filament in here. We're going to look for this filament to go up then down. If it doesn't, then we're going in the wrong direction and we need to change the direction. And it is going up then down, so it's going in the right direction. Um, and so that's good. And this is just a small piece of, of filament that I put in it to make sure that it's working. So I'm going to scoot this back around. So that is working correctly. Go ahead and pull this filament out, maybe. We'll put some other filament in there in a minute. Go ahead and get our ETFE tube down in there. <clears throat> um, next step that we're going to do, so we validated that our motor should be going in the right direction with the stepper button. Um, we check your end stops. So we do want to query the end stops. Now you can either do an end stop query, or if you come to the machine tab, down at the bottom, you should have your end stops. Um, I guess macro or applet widget. And I like to just use this. You got to refresh it. And it should say that X and Y is open because they're sensorless. We haven't triggered them. And Z is triggered because the bed did drop down. So I'm going to raise that up until I hear the, the end stop. Do a refresh, it's now open. We'll let the bed go back down. Trigger the end stop. Trigger it again. So I know that the end stops are working at this point for the for the physical end stops that we have in place. 
yeah, VHB works great, especially when you print a part and for whatever reason the holes don't line up right, and it doesn't need to be a real, I'll say, structural piece. Um, we don't need to flip any of our end stops because our end stops are right. Um, XY homing check. So this becomes the spot where we need to be ready to do the emergency stop, right? We're going to come up here and go back to our dashboard. And we're going to kind of, you know, rather than be all the way at the top, I'm going to kind of come down so it's closer. But I'm going to do one axis at a time. So I'm going to tell X to home. And if it doesn't start moving in the right direction, I'm going to immediately bang over here and do emergency stop. I'm going to say home X, and it should go to the right. So it was going the right direction, but that was a weird sound. So let me... did do an emergency stop right there. See something. These are the speeds from Rolahan's config. So I don't know if it's just that the speeds are way high or what just caused that, but let me take, I'm gonna try it again. Okay, so that worked, but after it made that weird sound, which I'm not sure if it's just like an acceleration issue. All right, so the Y went in the wrong direction. So emergency stop. When we come back in here to fix things, we're gonna go into the printer config. And we have a max acceleration of like 10, what is that, 10,000? I'm gonna drop that down for the time being to like 3,000. But, you know, let's just, Make it a little safer. We can crank it back up down the road. We, we got it at 3,000. Hopefully we stop that. And then what we need to do is we'll come look at our guide in here. And they have different guides. So for the B0, which is showing here, so we, our X moved in the correct direction. So down here, our X moved in the right direction but our Y moved in the wrong direction, right? Yeah, it was about skip or stall, so I just brought that down to 3,000, which should be fine. If I need to, I'll go down to 2,500 or two to start with. Yeah, and so what that says is the steppers are swapped. Swap the A and B connector which is weird because I followed the actual V0 guide and, you know, BA, so B and A, and I put them in the right spots, but it's telling me, well, that's wrong, swap the connect. And of course, the way I have everything zip tied, it's, I'm not gonna be able to swap them up here where it'd be easy. So I'm gonna come back up here. I'm going to save and restart with the Lower max Excel. I'll make sure to save that. I'm going to do a shutdown. And that's so when I pull power, I don't inadvertently um, corrupt the uh, Raspberry Pi SD card. So I've given it plenty of time to do its shutdown sequence. I'm going to pull the actual power. And then I'm going to set this over. And swap the X and Y, which is the middle two wires. Pull X, Y out, and just swap those two around. Okay, set that back up. Okay. 
and power it back in. Plug it back in, power it up. <coughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It says that this should that the printer should go boss. So this should be B, and this should be A, right? And that B equates to X, and A equates to Y. But apparently, they mean it goes ba ba, and so A should be the first motor or, or X, B should be the second motor or Y. And normally, I wind up doing that backwards all the time and I wind up always have, I haven't had a single printer that I plugged in the XY on a core XY has worked right out of the gate. So, Oh, and this is a Raspberry Pi Zero W, so the original Raspberry Pi Zero. And like I said, um, excuse me, I'm going to reach across the camera. I do have a Banana Pi, um, Banana Pi M2, Zero M2, and this is... The same exact form factor as Raspberry Pi Zero, with the performance more online of a Raspberry Pi 3. It's got a quad-core uh, 1.2 gigahertz, I believe, ARM processor. And you do have to get an external antenna. This one is an external like rubber ducky antenna. And I have seen um, uh, an actual base mount or a different foot that you can get in print that will actually have a hole for the DC connector as well as for your um, your antenna. So that would be the next step on this is to possibly switch over and try this to see if we get any better performance beyond this. Because as you can see, this takes a while for it to bring mainsail and everything up. Okay, so that's back up and running. We're, we're centralized again, relatively speaking. And once again, we're going to do the X, see if we're going in the right direction again. Into the right direction, Y. Going to the back, and that one hit a little hard, but we're still getting, um, we're still getting a bunch of Noise. One thing I want to do that I didn't do that I probably should have done is I should check the amperage and, and make sure that it's not that I'm running too low on these. I think I'm running them at all at 0.5. I can probably run them all up to 0.7. I mean, hold current. So I will tell you eventually, yes, I've got the BMG extruder on this. Eventually, what I think I want to do is put a Sherpa Mini or an Orbiter 
on here mounted on the back like the kits are going to come from um uh fabrico because i really like that i've reached out to him to say like hey can you share that one mount just for that piece um but i haven't gotten anything back they just try and, and ping hector directly to see if if they're willing to provide that because i haven't seen that mod anywhere my assumption would be that the mod is out in the community somewhere but i can't find it Okay, so once again, we did that. We're going to do a save and restart. And we're going to go ahead and move to the metal again. Now we're going to go in the right direction. We need to find the emergency stop trying to figure out that belt scale. Okay. Skipping it. Why is still hitting? And see, even upping those currents, it's it's like I didn't. Uh, I'm wondering, like, are my belts themselves too loose now because it looks like they have loosened up some. Which which hot end do you want? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm going to get one of those kits, I know. Wife is now listening. I'm not going to be in trouble. I know I'm going to get one of those kits. And I'm thinking that I might get one of those kits and build it before birth. Those are a little bit tighter, so. Water's off. Move to the center, see if it was a belt issue. See, that's weird why it's like, you know, because it's almost the sound you get if your phases were wrong, but it should continue to do that, not do it initially and then go. So, and. Pretty sure. Once again, that it's not any of these. Oh, those are snug. All right, we're going to drop the acceleration down even more. And when we're hitting on Y, seems to be a little bit uh, it hits and keeps driving so we're going to move that sensitivity up some to match the same thing next which i don't know why they were different to start with yeah 
Yeah. Well, and it's, I think it's blue and it's got the Rook symbol on it, which is kind of a cool, neat thing. See if the motors are fighting. Right. See, but I don't know why the motors would be fighting and then they and then they work the right direction. Doesn't that still doesn't make sense to me, Chewy, why they would be fighting. I mean, we'll definitely try it. But if the phases were wrong, they would, um, if the phases were wrong, then it would normally make that sound, but it would make that sound and continue. It wouldn't like stop and start going all of a sudden. I'm going to jump over and open the P0. The Yeah, so what's happening is it's it's doing that grinding and then all of a sudden it'll move in the X and then it'll grind and then it'll move in the Y. So I don't think the motor should be fighting because you'd think that they would continuously fight each other and then not move at all in, in any direction. Because my knowledge, Clipper's not gonna go, oh, I must I must need to change direction or anything. At least it's never done it for me before. So, sensorless is enabled, and I will double check that sensorless is enabled on X and Y, and interpolates off. Self chop set homing retract distance is zero. It is, yeah, and that was the other thing is I know there's issues with um, centralist homing if you have the retract distance set to like five. Or, or anything other than zero, it'll mess up. So you're saying turn this, the Yeah, like I said, I started up, my starting values were the values from um, Rolahan's config. So that was a starting value. What we can do, you know, 90 was the base, go up a bit. Both X and Y.
be right. We'll see if that fixes it. We've got our current set up right. The homing speed is 40 for both of them. Wanted to double check something. And you know what? The other thing is, I've got the micro set, set to 64. I'm going to go down to 32. Never gone above 32. I have a feeling my rotation distance could be different than for the Z. Because that would be a, um, yeah, you run 64, but are you running 64 micro steps on, you know, through a Raspberry Pi Zero? Because that's the other thing is running the higher step micro step count is going to run more um, more instructions through the Raspberry Pi Zero, which it may not be able to. And the rotation distance for the belt of Z should be forty, right? Eight, which would be for a screw. Basically, it should match because it's using the same pulley type as the X and Y motor. Because it seemed like that was moving a lot more than the, the other ones. So. Okay, so. We drop those down to 32. We increase the sensitivity a bit. So we might actually have to drop it back because it may be the 32 mic or the 64 micro steps that were causing us issues. Don't know. But we're back in the center where I go for an X. Okay, we're gonna go for Y. Still seems like it's hitting hard in Y, but we didn't get as much of a of a tick tick. So got a little bit, but not as much. So what I want to do is go back to, like you were saying, we're gonna drop down to 16 micro steps for X and Y. Because once again, that's gonna be the the lower number of instruction that it's having to process through the controller board. And really, I mean, on a printer like this, we're not trying to go for ultra high precision multi-stepping in. Um, with the extruder. Um, Same. So so higher numbers would be more sensitive, lower numbers would be less sensitive. So the Y is still jumping around a lot more than so let's put the X back where it was, Y where you know raise the Y a little. Yeah, the grind is nearly gone, so that's good. Back up and running, or at least I am.
So I'm going to go ahead and go X. The Y is getting a little bit better when it hits, but it's still like a delayed kick in, like, like it's struggling torque wise to get started. Go ahead and bump up our line current just a little bit more on these. I'm going to bump up the Y sensitivity just a little bit because it didn't jump around as much that time. That was good. Higher numbers would be more sensitive, lower would be less sensitive. As I went up, it seemed to make, it seemed to require less of a bump. Let me see where we're at now. kind of hard I mean we I'll, I'm more than happy to try and go lower that one chewy saying go lower on the threshold there we're using spread cycle all the way around Forcing spread cycle. See if that makes. But once again, it's almost like there's a like a startup delay that's going on. Weird. I've never had that happen. Where it kind of does that, and then it starts moving. So I mean, yeah, it's. Really, really weird. X. I think we definitely got to go higher rather than lower. It does not seem to have the oomph to hold that belted Z up. I'm on Higher on the I instruments going threshold. Increase the current on bed belt. You're just wear an idiot wearing the cap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like me with when it comes to stealth chop it's i mean it's not like super crazy hard but it does take a little bit to get used to it and like i said every time you adjust a parameter whether it's your acceleration or your homing speed 
you also have to adjust your stealth your yeah your threshold numbers as well. So reset. We're back up. We're centered. You know what I need to do? Say so stop playing around. Um, oh. Go with the rest. Apparently, I'm bending down here. So we've got. One seven H S five OMC stepper online. This is the other thing that I didn't look at that I probably should have is what is the specs on this motor, which is one and a half amp. Rated current per phase. And we run, <clears throat> I think, 75%. Yeah, I should be running more like full amp up to 1.1 amp. That's why we're the other reason why we made lagging from the start. Yeah, no more than 80%. That's why I said was I, I did it by, um, so it's a one and a half amp rated motor. I took 1.5 and multiplied it by 75. And it comes out to 1.12 something. So I'm going to start at one. Still getting that initial buzz wine before it actually starts kicking in. But we didn't get the, I'll say the, the hit and keep going. So 130 is the best for that. Um, cut the motors. I'm going to lift this up. UX. This did push down some against me. Okay, so now that Y hit, and you know what it's doing, that whine? I didn't even think about it. It's trying to move the bed. It's trying to move the bed down, because remember, you, you move the, the um, hot end up before you do anything, and the bed's been sitting down at the bottom the whole time. So that's what that initial whine is. It's the, actually the bed trying to be moved, not the XY motor. Okay, 
Oh, wow. My uh, X monitor got real loose as well. So. That's an issue with the tension of the motor itself not staying. So the, which felt the same thing up here, like these belts had gotten way looser. I don't know why, so I'm going to cut this down. Ah, so you're saying that the, the actual stepper motors itself, or the stepper drivers on the board, can't take that much current. This thing's not that bad, but... Yeah, this thing... Oh! Oh! I see what it was. It wasn't my belt. It was the actual zip ties on the belt that started coming. Okay. See if we can't get in there and fix that, man. What has happened is the zip ties on the belt came loose, therefore allowing the belt itself to get loose. Now I'm trying to belt back through there so I know it's gone. Ones that won't come off. They force them. Okay, this is sort of the downside of the zip tie technique. Okay, loosen this paper up so I can get back. Thanks for hanging out with me, Cherry, and keeping me, uh, Keeping me thinking in the right directions. Or at least helping me come up with different ideas about what may be causing the issue.
one there. Oh yeah, we all have different experience in, you know, working with different things. Right now, the um, my Ender Three is the one that I've done the most as far as centralist homing on, and even that, you know, once you get it set up, you really don't need to mess with it. It just works. So, go ahead and get a second zip tile on this. Two. two zip ties on each. Okay. Um. Like I said, I think part of it was the belt got loose because of the zip ties started coming undue on the Z. And that's what we were hearing before was, remember on most of your configs for a safe homing, it will raise the hot end, or in the case of a, of a system like this, it will drop the bed like five millimeters five to 10 millimeters to do its movement, right? Before it does an X, Y home. And so I think that's what the issue was, is it's that first little whir that we're hearing is the Z motor kicking in, trying to drop down, which it can't because it's right up against the end stop. And then it, it tries to do the homing. So 
I'm going to kind of hold it up right there. And we should see once we, when we can get in. Yeah, this zero takes forever to. Yeah, and if I start getting that error that you just saw where the timer too close or whatever, that's an indication that the Raspberry Pi Zero is just over overloaded, overtasked. And I need to look at um, replacing it with the banana pie. All right, so I'm holding the bed up for right now. I'm going to tell it to do X. It should try and push the bed down. Now it's got holding current in place. X home, Y, it should drop the bed down. And now Y is too sensitive. So we're gonna come into machine, printer. Hi, oh, you froze for a second. Sorry about that. And now that we know what's going on, Y is too sensitive, wonder, we just take that back to 90. I'm going to do a save and restart and hold my bed up so it's down because as soon as it drops, it drops. Oh. Um, So what I got, Chewy, is the banana pie. I think it's a M20, so it's the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi, but it's got a quad core processor. It still has the 512 meg of RAM. Um, yeah, and man, we are a couple of seconds behind on video lag. Really need to. I'm, I'm watching the stream over on. Once again, I'm holding the bed up because there's no current going to the Z motor just yet. But remember, as soon as I tell it to go to X, it's going to energize the Z and the X motors. It will drop the bed down like five or 10 millimeter because that's a safe homing procedure. X goes over. Now I'm going to say why it's going to drop the bed again. Okay, so we, we do need to bump up Y just a tad. So I dropped it all the way back to, to 90. Good. Put that back up to like 110. Because 130 wound up being too, um, too aggressive. Um, I want to say the, I'll double check. I want to say it was like 25 bucks through AliExpress and it came with the heat sink, the, um, USB mini to USB, I think it's a mini or micro to B connector, USB micro to a USB A connector and the HDMI mini to HDMI connector. The only other thing you'll need to do is buy the external Wi-Fi antenna, because unless it's sitting right next to your Wi-Fi router, it's not gonna have the own. Um, I, um, I was able to install and do sudo apt-get update and apt-get and, uh, upgrade and that worked and I was able to get clone clipper but as soon as I tried to install or I'm sorry the uh, Kaiowa but as soon as I started to install clipper it would fail until I got that external antenna 
And once I did, it was it was rocking. Whoops. Come on, motor. Move motor. And that's still hitting pretty hard, so I'm gonna move that up to 120. Like I said, 130 was too much. One year, 125 should do. This is the nice thing why Clipper, you know, is so great because doing this on, you know, trying to set your stealth chop thresholds. For your your senseless homing thresholds on a um, on Marlin and having to recompile firmware after every restart would suck. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it all. So it seems like 120 is still too much for the Y. I need to go between 110 and 120, so we'll go. Oh yeah, and, and like you said, some of these prices are insane, even for AliExpress for the knock, like the, um, I think the Radsa, or ADXA, is probably one of the best replacement boards for the Zero, but the the price is insane, because people know it, you know? Um, yeah, it's just crazy. Okay, so that seems to work great. So I'm at positive and positive, so I'm going to go um, And I'm starting to get close. Um, what's what's next? So we finally got our, our drivers moving in the right direction. We did our the home. Needed to find our zero zero point for the V zero and V one. <clears throat> so we homed X and Y. And now we just need to basically move it to the front left corner and then use the, the numbers we have to actually
that would be in, we're in front of the front edge of the bed, right? You move Y positive. Going to put my big cranium in the way or turn this slightly so X. X still go less. Well, I say we can still go left. I think we're right there. We pretty much right against the end. That would be. far over as we can go. So X I have at eight. Y I think we are right at that would be Y. So Y is currently reading team. for to retrieve the current location which should match up with the points that I was just getting. X8, Y15, and Z we'll, we'll still figure out. So Yeah, so right now that banana pie is running a version of Armbian. Say it's bullseye. And um, it, it, it seems to be running fine. I've got Marlin, or I've got uh, uh, Kiao on it, so I've got Clipper and. Um, Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail. I'm not running a camera. I don't plan on running a camera on this. If I do, it'll be an external one. Um, so everything's working good there. So we did that. We got our values. Yeah, so we're going to need to decrease our um, so we have to decrease our maxes by the numbers we have. So we are going to lose build space on this. So our in stop position and max position is currently 120 and right now we're, we're at the front left corner and we are reading eight millimeters but i can't go over anymore because of the idler i'm right up against the idler so because of the the rookery like if i didn't have the rookery i could get full plate but with the rookery i'm going to have to be lower 
So I need to drop this to 112 and the max position to 112. X and then Y said I was 120, but to be on the front edge of the plate, I meant positive 15 still, so I need to take 15 off of that. So I'd be 105. And remember that when you do a restart and you drop power from your X, it's going. Hey, Everything Plus Ultra, how are you doing? Thank you for joining in. We're having a great day. We're having a great stream. It's gone a lot longer than I anticipated. But we, we I think we got some things squared away now. Um, and we are back up and running we were having some issues and we realized that our belts had come loose um so our zip ties came loose on our belts so we had to fix that and we were trying to figure out why we kept hearing like a grinding and then the movement of the tool head and i didn't even think that the bed was sitting down on the zn stop and by default when you home a printer it tries to raise the head so that when it does the homing movement, it doesn't drag across the bed. Well, on a, on a bed like this, it's going to try and drop the bed down before doing that. So that's what it was. It was trying to drive the bed down, and of course it couldn't because it was against the end stop. So it was just making a whining noise. Test this out. We're going to pull again. Had a little hard on why. Um, I thought I said all. Oh. Move out of range. Oh, I know what it's doing. Okay. Um, We just set X max to 112 and Y max to 105. So for C, D safe home, we need to make this 112. And 105. That up so it didn't slam. I have a feeling I'm going to have to double check my end print G code as well because I have a feeling that my end print, my end print or print end G code shuts off all the motors and I can't do that on this printer or it'll drop the bed. I have to keep um, the bed energized. Start end. X, And pushing part now. So it looks like turn off the heaters, but I don't turn off the motors. Good. 
got to go in here and set my tax locations up. Yes, success. But we still need to do the. Um, hey, thanks for the lurk, everything plus ultra. We still need to go through and do the next step, which would be um, setting the actual Z height offset, I believe. And stop the location. We don't need to do that. The in stop location for B0. Yeah, so now that we've got it honed, we're going to do a Z in stop calibrate. That will allow us to set the actual distance between the honed position and the. Come on. Do one. I do know G-Cook. Get the, um, we got the tool head relatively right in the middle. We've got the bed close. Now, if I do Z-Bed calibrate, probably be a little bit closer. But what I can do is probably get even closer.
now we will do our Z-Bank Calibrate and I will need a piece of paper for a sticky note. I've got right here. So, over the corner that I can use to my little test. Start going down. Okay. Well, we are getting really close. Um, Let me get a good drag there. And bam, with that, we are a nozzle and not the bed. Sorry for my head in the way. Some amount of tension there. So I think that's going to be good. So we're going to accept that. We now have our, our Z end stop. And once again, I'm going to save the config, which is going to drop the power to the um, motors. So I definitely need to put my finger right underneath here so it doesn't drop the bed all the way. Go ahead and do a home all. Our home went down to one thirteen point nine eight seven. So if I do a G one. X60, Y60, Z, U, F3000. Should move the, the cool head to the center and bring the bed right up to two millimeters away. Again, we're three. Drop back one, two, and I've got some tension right there. So we are bloody perfect. We are perfect, which means it's time to put in some filament and see if we can't get a print. So, nice filament rack here. That back there, and we will grab some now we got a, got a big plate. Let's go ahead and we'll do Polymaker uh, Polylight Galaxy Black.
been in cut off from the end to get on this point. For a guide tube. Started. I have not set up the full load max. Tells me my computer's below the main which is good. Up a bit, getting our filament installed. We may be pushing plastic here. We're pushing plastic, we need to see some hype and some noise here. That's going to be an awesome thing, finally. Meanwhile, probably what I'll do is. I have a profile yet. Easier. Action on a button. Need to start with.
All righty. So we're up to temp. And we got our filament started. We're going to go ahead and hit filament load and see where we get to. I have a feeling that we're going to not make it as far as we need to. Another thing we need to do is we haven't, uh, I was getting so excited, we have not done our calibration yet for our filament. Go ahead and shoot another 25 millimeters. So I had base um, settings on this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise this up a bit. I'm gonna put tape right as it exits the top of the um, TFE piece. And now what I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to tell it to do 50 millimeters. I do that twice. So I'm going to tell it to extrude 50 millimeters. Tell it to extrude another 50 millimeters. So that means we told it to extrude 100 millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is measure to see how far we actually traveled. And if it's 100 millimeters, then hey, we are bang on and good. If it's not, then we need to adjust. And looking at it right now, We are about five millimeters too much. So we're over extruding by five millimeters. So I need to get my handy dandy formula, which I know is going to be somewhere over. I haven't pit tuned anything either. We'll have to do that. In fact, I mean, if we uh, ah, we also haven't done our bed screws yet, so I do that actually go ahead and do that while well, we've got things heated, but we're not. So this is head screws adjust. Paper in there and ready tie electric Lucy. Paper's on loose. We'll move this knob to the left. Dragon just fit. Okay, that's good for now. Market is adjusted. And drop the bed and go to the next point. Okay, interesting. Something went wonky there. Hey, Speedy Cat, how are you doing? Thank you for joining in. Uh, you have built a few Vorons and a switch wire yourself. Awesome. Yeah, so I've got a switch screens here if I'm in the right. 
Hi, thank you for joining in. So we've got baby blue here, which is a boron V0. We've got red dragon here, which is a inner wire or a creality inner three pro to switch wire, so an inner wire converter. Um, this is my custom DBOT 4XY printer. And this corner over here is pretty much Prusa Mark III, Prusa Mark III, these two are bears. The Prusa Mark III over here in the corner, um, which is a standard Mark III. This is my, whoops, Ender III right over here, which is heavily modified. Down on the floor, I have Blue Dragon, which is another uh, Ender wire conversion, Ender III Pro to switch wire conversion. And what we're working on right now is a Rook Mark I. And what I was just trying to do was a bed screws adjust, and I think it's got an issue and was throwing an error because, wow, it's not even going to, oh, I hate doing I hate doing this. Um, well, no, I can in three. I'm going to have to SSE. Try and shut down the Raspberry Pi gracefully. I know what the issue is. So what happened was I was trying to do bed screws adjust. And if you just saw that bed crash to the bottom, that's what happens when the, uh, on a belted Z, when you drop power to your Z motor, it's going to drop it down to the bottom. So pretty much what I want to do is set my Z to come almost all the way down to the bottom. Um, at the end of a print. So that way it'll be kind of safe if power gets cut, it'll drop a millimeter or two. Um, I have a feeling what the issue is here is I told it to do bed screws adjust. The bed screws are on the very outer edge over here. And because of the rookery mount um, with the dual 4010 fans, I'm only getting 112 across as opposed to 120. So I have a feeling it couldn't get to this point or it couldn't get to this point because once again, I'm getting 105 front to back. So I have a feeling that that's part of the issue is that these two locations are out of bounds. So when it was done here and it was going to go here, it freaked out because it, it knew it was an out of bounds move. And it so what I need to do is figure out and drop these as appropriate in the bed screws adjust macro. I just did a host reboot. Why? That's what I'm looking for. Sorry for, for the desk scroll. Slower. Um, what I need to do is come down here to my bed screws adjust. And the front is good because it can get to it. We set our new zero zero to be the front left corner of the head. But the screw two, which is five and one fifteen. The 115 on the Y, our max position for Y is 105. So I really need to set this to 100. This is based off of the nozzle itself. 
But once again, this should be one. Because we're going five off of the, kind of five off from the front and the back. And yeah, so it'd be over five, back five short, which would be 100. And then the back right corner, we want to be at 100, but my um, 100 back. Y be 100. And my X, the max is 112. So this would need to be like 107 to be safe. 60 should be middle of the bed. 5 is just back. 5, 7. That should be fine. We know that our max position to the end stop is 113.7. So save and close this and go back over to my macros before I forget and print end do my part. Max X is 112, max Y is 5. Also add x score z. It's one thirteen, so we'll make twelve. So say maxi is two. So we're gonna make that one twelve slide. That way it'll be close enough that it, when it does drop the motor, if it does, it won't it'll drop just a couple of millimeters versus like a hundred millimeters and crash into the end stop at the bottom. Now we'll do our save and restart where we're at the bottom. So start off and do a home all. Start heating everything up because I like to have everything heated up when I when I work on the bag because that way it's just any warping or anything it's it's consistent everything's up and down. We're just going to move it over to the center, bring everything up. So we're going too far on our rotation distance. So while we're waiting for things to back up and we do our bed screws adjust, I'm going to find that rotation distance formula. There we go. 
Talk to you later. We wanted 100, we got 105. So actual exterior amount, two holes high, divided by turning amount. Times our current value. Uh, rotation distance for our extruder twenty two point one seven two So this is going to get changed to 3.280. We're just going to save and close. I don't want to. I don't want to restart because I had the heaters warming up. But we will double verify we are getting the right. Hey, Titan Gamer, how's it going? Audio cutting out badly, having issues? Um, I don't know. I know I do have delay set on, but I have not seen issues at the moment. Maybe at your end, maybe at my end, I don't know. I have been running with delay on, though, just because the, um, you know, I, I am kind of not rural, but I am out there. Um, but we do have the rook together. We do have the rook moving. So that's good. Um, we need to verify our steps that we just configured. And we we're also going to do bed screws adjust to get our bed um, to get our bed um, properly level before we try and do a print. If, yeah, if the stream is choppy. See if you can't um, like drop out and come back in and and see if that clears it. Because I am not seeing issues through OBS. Not seeing any issues with OBS. So what I'm going to do is I'm marking my filament again as it's coming out of my extruder. I'm going to tell it to extrude 50 once and then twice. We'll measure it again to see if our change is actually accurate now and we're actually still printing. We're asking for 100, we're getting 100. And then by then, our Heaters should be warm enough that we can do our bed screw adjust. Oh. And funny enough, you come up with the exact same measurement when you haven't done the reboot yet. So it's really funny how that works.
because the changes that you made didn't take effect. So we will go ahead and pull this back by the 100 and we're going to do our bed screws adjust and then we will come back after we have to do a reboot anyhow and check our rotation distance change. So screws adjust. Okay, we've got a little bit of play still, so we'll play out of there. We'll say adjusted, and it'll move over to this side. A lot of play. I guess that bed really is. It also helps move the you loosen it instead of tighten it. Oh, not a problem, Titan Gamer. Fully understand that. We all get busy from time to time. And the streams, you should be able to go back and watch the streams anytime you want. And I am putting them over to YouTube as well so that they'll live on over there. So, so we'll say that is adjusting. Go to the third. Point. Let me tell you, left and right. Um, complexity wise, it's not really that complex. Um, I mean, all in all, it was a really quick build, especially getting the frame and everything together. Um, are you trying to do mental? Which way does the screw go? Um, yeah, it's, it's been a relatively easy build so far. Um, we have had a, a couple of hiccups as far as we were, like, we were trying to figure out firmware. And I had the firmware right. What my issue was, was every time I would do a, um, like a home, we kept feeling like the, the motors were skipping and we couldn't figure out why. And come to find out, well, on a, on a regular Cartesian printer, it lifts the print head before it does an XY movement for home. And it does that for safety reasons, right? So you don't drag it across the bed or knock the print off. Well, on, on a 
printer like this, it has to drop the bed down to do that. Well, what I was hearing was the bed trying to drive itself down through the end stop, and then the X motor would go over, the Y motor would go over, and everything would be fat and hunky dory again. So once I figured that out, and we had to play around with the centerless homing settings because this does centerless home for X and Y, and we got those squared away, you know, so now we're good. Um, we just did that and we've accepted that and we need to the firmware restart and yeah that would be why i need to set a safe z home on that so it doesn't just drop down against the, the z end stop but overall complexity i mean the build was really easy really easily um everything's pla printed um i did wind up i was going to try and use creality motors and i couldn't do that because the they all had pressed pulleys on them and they wouldn't line up and if i took the pulleys off which i have a pulley extractor um then i'm back stuck to um i'd have to grind flat spots on the shafts which is a pain in the butt and it's just easy enough to go on amazon order motors and they're here in two days which is what I did. Because I'm, I guess I'm lazy like that. The only other thing I need to do now is I'm going to check my E steps on the extruder again. And then we're going to try and push some plastic. Because that was the goal today, was regardless of anything else, I wanted to get to a point where we push plastic. Um, the other Big issue I had, which was all my fault, was I had configured the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Pico on the on the desk, and I could have sworn that I had um, Clipper firmware on the Pico already. Because uh, what caused the drop? So whenever you're using a belt and you do a power reset or a firmware reset, it cuts um, power to the motors. So the holding current is the only thing that's holding the bed up, so the bed will drop, right? Where if you have a lead screw, there's gonna be enough tension on the lead screw, especially if you have a, um, oh, whatchamacallit, the anti-backlash nut that it won't drop, right? So the reason the bed dropped like that was because it's a belt-driven Z, right? So that's where at the end of my print macro, or my print end or end print macro, I added a line to take the bed to like two millimeters off the end stop. So when power does get cut to the motor, it's gonna drop a little bit versus like 112 millimeters. Right now, things are warmed up so I can test this. So I'm, I'm going to tell it to push 50 millimeters, extrude that twice. So we're gonna do an extrude. So yeah, what I basically had to do was kind of get on my Be Right Back stream and I had to physically move the printer over towards my desktop because the board that they come that the skr pico comes with is really designed to plug into your raspberry pi right next to it so i had to move the printer over there to copy the firmware over onto the pico and then once that was done i was able to bring it back up on the desktop and away we go again so we basically said do 100 and we are now getting a hundred, so our E steps are good. Um, we are ready, I believe, to push plastic. I'm not going to worry about pressure advance tuning or input shaping or anything like that just yet. Um, I just want to, I want to see plastic coming out this hot end. So. 
that was the overall goal for me. Yeah, and that end stop, I did take the metal lever off the end stop, but the end stop itself is just a Creality board that is VHB taped to an L-shaped bracket that locks in down. So there's not a whole heck of a lot that, that, that's holding it up. Do we have that? Let me do a filament load. I have no idea. I didn't check to see which macro this is as far as length. And I have not checked the length of this. Probably something I, I ought to do is check the actual length of tube. Little extrapolating math. I have a feeling it's going to be something stupid. But yeah, I need to go like 500 miles. Yeah, so in the original, um, like Mark Betas, not Mark, the Rook Betas, um, they, they were using dual lead screws. Well, they started off with one, and then they went to dual lead screws um, that were side to side. And, you know, you didn't have to worry about the bed dropping. Now that they went to a belted bed, you've got to keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we're going to have to go like, and of course Well, that's it. Keep doing film. The Titan Gaming. Let me, uh. Let me show you this. This is my um, recently printed, printed on my Zero G, which is the uh, Ender 5 Plus. This is a Warhammer 40,000 Chaplain's Helmet. I've got a lot of accent pieces and hoses and stuff to put. But I'm going to start printing those out and getting those ready to go on. This is, this came out really well. I mean, I've got some layer lines. And I'm, I don't know if I want to like sand it because then I'll have some issues unless, I don't know, maybe I can sand it and wash it down and keep some of the layer lines out and um, get some of the... Um, but yeah, be able to sand it and not have that color messed up too. Assuming if I wash everything down with up the water and rinse all the residue off should be good.
gracious, yeah, I need to do like a really, really long filament load sequence here. There we go. We got plastic coming out, folks. The printer has been christened. It has spit out its first plastic. And cheers erupted from the crowd. Um, right now that helmet is one piece. Um, but there are several other pieces that will get printed and attached to it. such as such as the cross I, that's what I was thinking is this bronze do i go with like some metallic blue accents is this or this is a light blue no this is a cobalt blue from xylotech well, I, I wanted to print that out and see what that looked like in contrast so i'm not looking at painting the whole thing i'm just trying to do some contrasting colors I'll put this up on a, a nicer picture of this up on Twitter and stuff and ask everybody's opinion on if they like that color combination or they think there should be some other color combination um, used. Especially before I start going through and uh, gluing things on. I was going to do black for the ends of the tubes, and I was thinking some chrome, and some of that blue is an accent. Let's see. But it'll have like ear cuff pieces. There's a knob on the back that's used to supposedly adjust the helmet. Um, there will be some temple um, rivets or buttons. So, okay, so we've got. First set of plastic the nozzle. We happen to be it up. And we happen to have a file I just uploaded. So let's see what we can come up with. And let me see. If I can't uh, give you a little bit better camera view, at least a little closer. Let's see how it's all. Drop the camera real fast so I can swap it out and not get you guys all weirded out. I thought I was dropping the camera. Apparently I dropped the wrong view. That's that's great. Sorry about that. 
get our camera view set up. If I come over here, bigger camera. Looks like we're still too high, so. We'll just tab it. Like it's laying down a lot better. We are printing the world famous watch truck. For no other reason than I what else to print, and it was quick and easy. I did decide to go with this is uh, Polymaker Polylight PLA Galaxy Black just to um, just to have contrast against the bed. I, at first, I was going to grab a gold, and I said gold against a gold bed would probably not be the best. So. Set up here and take a quick picture. Proof of life video that we use for a serial request. Awesome. What else have you been up to, uh, Titan Gamer? Been doing anything interesting these days? And a lot of people have jumped over to other streams. But we have movement, we have classic coming out. So we have made progress. Once again, I'll, I'll work on input shaping, pressure advance, and, and I'll say advanced tuning down the road. At this point, I just wanted to see progress. So once again, this is the Rook Mark 1. 
we are running a um, Big Tree Tech SKR Pico for the controller board and a Raspberry Pi Zero W, original Zero W. Um, if I run into issues where I start take, taking timing issues, um, where it drops timing between the basically the host and controller drop out of timing because the host gets overloaded in the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, I do have a Banana Pi M20, which is the same exact form factor that I will drop in there and run that because that is four four ARM processor at 1.2 gigahertz. Still has the 512 mega RAM just like the Raspberry Pi Zero. So we should be good with that. Um, we are running a BMG clone uh, extruder. All the stepper motors are stepper online 1.8 uh, motors that are rated at one and a half amps. We do have, uh, let's see, it's, the base model is the Rook Mark 1 with several Gulsifer mods, as well as a couple of, of Canron mods like the center mounted Reality um, Z in stop, as well as the bed with the clamps on it, I believe is the Canron mod. The Gulfspur Speed Mod for the XY Gantry and Idlers. Um, we are running a Rookery. Uh, it's the 4010 Rookery, so the dual 4010 blower fans, and a 3010 for the hot end. The hot end is a Creality CR, which is not a goodness, an E3D Revo CR, so it's the, it's the direct drop in replacement for a Creality machine. Um, all the parts are printed in Polymaker. The black parts are Polymaker Galaxy Black, which is what we're printing in right, right now. And the gold parts are Polymaker PLA Pro Gold. Um, it does have a little bit, bit of a metallic um, uh, particle, particulate look to it, so like the Galaxy. So that's nice. Uh, we are on a Mike 6 build plate using a Kenovo 24 volt uh, 100 watt heater and a LDO Voron Edition dual texture uh, PEI sheet. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for the for the make out of this printer. Uh, we do have a uh, 24 volt 8 amp power brick um, providing power with the DC jack in the back um, and a 4010 24 volt cooling fan on the side providing cooling air over the Raspberry Pi Zero and the stepper drivers. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get some uh, layer fusions, probably on all three wheels. But like I said, I, I will spend a little bit of time after this um, trying to dial in the printer a little bit to make sure I got my heights adjusted right and you know work on getting pressure advance and input shaping. I should say input shaping and then pressure advance um, on this particular machine. Um, I know it's running a Pi Zero and you can't input shape on a Pi Zero, but I do have my input shaper set up, is set up on a, um, a Raspberry Pi Pico. So it basically connects to the, the host controller via USB and acts as a secondary MCU. So all the input shaping calculations would be done on the Pico and then drop to the Pi, so, or Pi Zero, so we shouldn't have any problem there. And worst case scenario, once again, if I have any performance issues, I'll drop in the banana Pi, which should be fine for doing shaping. It's quite important.
but we do have life. Which was the end goal for the day. Have another printer that's, that's working and pushing plastic that we can play with. And if you like what you see here in Gold Dragon, my plan is to take most likely Gold Dragon, the Rook Mark One, um, Baby Blue, which is my Boron B0, and my Prusa Mini, all three I'm planning on taking to Murph in June. Um, I will be going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rat Fest this year, but I'm not going to bring any printers because I'm flying in. Um, but going to Murph, I will bring printers. I will grab a table. Um, in the center, I'm not going to be like a, a vendor table. I'll grab a table in the center. And I will have printers on display. And I should have a working uh, death racer at the event as well. Excuse me. A badly prentice racer will be at uh, Murph um, flying my, uh, my name account. Yes, what do you think, uh, Titan Gamer? Neat little printer, huh? Hey, Cedar Craft, how are you doing? Yeah, I really, um, once I start printing out the parts for you, I will go through and, because I want to get your parts printed out first, and I'll print all those out and then get them on their way to you. And then I'll print out the Stealth Dragon that you sent over to me. And I'll do that. Um, it'll be, the dragon won't be black. It'll be that graphite from KVP, which is like a, it's almost like a charcoal gray color. So I'll, I'll run that. One layer and then come back with the the uh, blue, which is also a KVP like sparkle blue. And yeah, I may yeah that, that's gonna happen. It, it will happen most definitely. And thank you so much for uh, coming up with that little design. And like I said, I may come up with some STL or um, dragon logos for the side of the rook and have my wife print those off in uh, like vinyl on her cry cut and then just stick those on to the rook. Because eventually I will have, I've got the NMU built. I just need to swap the printer placement here and the, um, this one will probably go sideways versus front to back up against that wall. And I'll probably mount up on this side wall over here. I'll mount the um, uh, one of my rep boxes so that I can run the spool straight out of the rep box. And that, that's, I just know that MMU tuning is a chore. But once I do that, then hopefully I'll be able to start printing some more multicolor prints. Excuse me. In fact, hold on a second. Fine. Yeah, so the cedar craft. What do you think about the bronze and the let's say cobalt blue from uh Zyltech with the bronze? 
Do you think that color combination works well? Or does or should it be like chrome or something? Because what I'm thinking on the temples over here, I'm gonna do a blue as the outer ring and then a chrome as the center. Just to be kind of like a ribbon. Okay, cool, let's see the craft. That's awesome. I did order the hoses that the guy suggested for the uh, for the respirator hoses on that. So I'll do that, and then the end brackets that that'll mount into the sockets will be in black. And I was thinking about maybe doing some chrome for the sole patch with the blue outer edge around it. So I'll probably like uh, line it, you know, get some stuff printed, line it up, take some photos, and then ask everybody their opinion. Yes, yeah, so we we dropped the acceleration on this down to 3000. Um, once I do input shaping on it, I can probably crank that up a great deal. Because um, I'm running like 12,800 as acceleration on the V0 right now, which granted is a little bit sturdier of a frame because, well, it's 1515 extrusion versus just the linear rods and PLA parts. Um, but I have seen people that have gotten these things cooking. The only difference is, is that they're um, they're a little top heavy because you've got these three motors up here. That's why some people are mounting, um, coming off the back with mounts for the extruder to be lowered is to provide a little bit lower or a heavier weight to drop the center of gravity some. But we definitely have proof of life here. I mean, extrusion wise, it, it seems like it's extruding pretty good too. Um, and by the way, Osita, this is how a Revo hot end should extrude. Um, <coughs> so definitely join me Tuesday night because I'm going to have a guest printer on this on the show on the stream. Um, it's the one that I was working on for my sister from another Mister Westry One. Uh, she sent me that printer, and yeah, there was some jank stuff with it. I'm not sure what was jacked up from the previous owner prior to her getting it, and uh, what parts may have been, you know, the plastic parts may have just been poor packing for shipment, and our lovely mailing slash parcel post people um but yeah like there was some printed parts busted that i had to reprint to get the printer back together um uh, which wasn't that big of a deal i i had all the I have all the tools to do that that's why i had it sent to me um but the hot end filament was so jammed in it That's, uh, I hope I'm still alive. If not, this full stream will be uploaded because OBS is, so there's a possibility that Twitch has seen some packet loss and is actively breaking this stream up into multiple pieces, which annoys me. And what I will do is I will take the OBS recording and upload that to YouTube, so it'll be one full stream. Um, the only way I can do that in um, for Twitch will be to not publish the multiple broken files, and then take this file and upload it to Twitch. In which case, it will it will show with like zero views, 
which is annoying, but at least I will get it back up there in a single stream package. But yeah, I think Titan Gamer was saying that it was breaking up a lot on him too. But I'm not seeing a high bit rate or anything. Could be. Could be. Um, yeah. That's what I was doing, just having to do a little bit of uh, surgery on Western One's printer to get up and in working order again. But the, the filament is jammed so bad in the heat sink. And I think what happened was either they retracted too quickly or something. I don't know, but I think I cannot extract the filament from the top of the heatsink, nor can I get the PTFE tube out of the top of the heatsink, which is really, really weird. Like to the point where I was trying to push down on the compression fitting, and my wife was pulling on the PTFE tube, and it broke the tube. So I think I just got notification that replacement parts are either here or they are in route close. Because then Amazon's telling me they're a couple of stops away. Yeah, so I think they're a couple of stops away, but I've got a replacement hot end for that machine coming. And yeah, it's like four stops away. And I have another hot end coming that would be for potentially a different option for the Rook. And that would be the... What do they call this? The um, CHC CR10. Let me see if this will show up. So it's the basically the Ender style heatsink, but it's got the CHC, so the ceramic heater. And this should wind up being the same length as the CR or. I'm sorry, the, the Revo CR. The only difference is on the Revo, you can unscrew the nozzle completely and pull the nozzle and throw it out. Where on this, on this cheaper CHC side, you still have a standard heat break. Then the CHC screws to that, and then you still have to do a hot tighten on the nozzle. But, you know, you put the nozzle on, and I, I haven't had to really take nozzles off. I haven't worked them up bad enough where I've got to rip them off and replace them. And it'll come with a, um, what is it, a, a bronze nozzle or whatever. And I've got several hardened steel nozzles. I'll just put a hardened steel nozzle on. Does that clear? But yeah, the Rook is up and running. She seems to be doing good. I haven't had any skips so far on the um, on the BMG Clone Extruder. The motors are, well, they're a little hot, but I'm running them at like one amp. These motors are rated at 1.5 amp. Um, I'll probably drop them down, um, drop them back down to like 0.8, just to give the, stepper drivers on the pico board a little bit more of breathing room back on us i'm dropping them down right
I still want to pig tune at least the bed. They say you don't have to pig tune the um, the Revo nozzles, but I'll probably just run the pig tune on it as well, just be on the safe side. I know it's just something I've been doing for years, so I always want to pig tune everything. But this first print, I mean, we're. 72% done, haven't had any hiccups. Like I said, the, the motors do feel a little warm. I mean, most motors can, can get real warm. It's not that big of a deal. But I just want to give the, um, the Victory Tech Pico 2209s a little bit of breathing room. I've got some cooling on them, but not a whole heck of a lot. I mean, the board temps are staying pretty good. The, uh, the reported temps off the Raspberry Pi is 35C, right around that area. And the MCU temp off the Pi Pico, or excuse me, not, the Big Tree Tech SKR Pico is running about 45.3. So that's pretty good. And the cooling seems to be doing pretty good on this. I want to try and do some overhang tests with those 4010s. And I do not, I, I am running this in forced um, spread cycle mode, so it's not doing any stealth chop. It's not dropping its speed down at all. So it will make noise. It will sing to you. Thirty up to a Cedar Craft. You working on any projects? Or does anybody have any projects they want to chat about? How about you, Daddy Waz? Are you still out there? Walk over here and turn the AC on. Two printers going and the uh, sun's coming around to the front side of the house. So even right in this side window here. So it really starts to heat this room up that We're doing some more resin prints as well. Um, got some parts started for Dragon Build. It's going. 
something that messed up back here, so I may have to reprint this. I may have had like a quote unquote layer shift. I'll have to reprint this one still, but I've got to do the other one as well. These will be the wings on it. Body. Could be pretty big. Decent size, I should say. Have a tail and a neck and a head and all that. I just got to get back in and train some. Been focusing on a couple other things like work and life. Okay, wow. So now I'm showing OBS is showing like a 56 second delay. So that might be why we're having some issues this year. Maybe there is something up with my connection today. But like I said, I will definitely post the video um, up on YouTube. And if, it, if Twitch has broken this up into multiple videos, I will go back and drop the one big video up on Twitch and just not publish the others. Um, I don't know if that hurts my view count or whatnot, but I don't want to sit there and have like the one stream I had where it, it dropped and I have like 10 different videos one actual day of life. But with that game, I mean, it's 4.30, where are we at? On we are 87% done. I think we should be able to get done fairly quickly. We're almost done anyhow. So we'll hold off, let this thing finish. We'll pop it off and take a look at the first print off the printer. And we will call it, at, you know, call it an end of the stream right after that. I'll continue to pink around with this uh, for the next couple of days. Looks like I may have a little bit of warping out of the backs. I should do that while it's printing, but that wasn't it. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll let this finish up real fast. We'll call this a stream. Um, like I said, I hope that everybody is still with me. If not, then like I said I will post these. We'll um, update people on Twitter. Stream has been done and will be uploaded soon. Published soon. Um, thank you so much for being here and working with me and helping me through this build. It's been great having everybody to chime in. I know Chewie was great at helping me do some troubleshooting, so that was good. Or more or less having somebody else to throw ideas and spitball against the wall on. It does look like that window is picked up there. That I'm wondering if I just really need to crank up the speed because of the amount of cooling that I have on this with the whole 40 dollars.
We say quick was reporting 100% done. That's and it it is done. It took an error um, interpreting the ng code, so it is finished. Um, we help it out by. Max. Fine, get that out of the way. And I will have to figure out what the issue is um, with that NG code. Yep, I'll figure that out in a little bit, but swatch truck is complete. They pop off pretty easily. Um, we did get some, some warping on that end, as you can tell. And I'm going to say that we were probably get black layer line. Um, I think that we were um, yeah, just looking at the, the layer lines, I think that we were still needing to squish down just a tad bit more. But point, point three is moving just fine. Point two, I felt a move. There we go. Point two is moving just fine. We get down to point one. I don't think so. I think we're going to need some tuning to get down to point one. Right now, we've got point two and point three that are moving freely. Point one is kind of fused, so we're going to have to work on that. And once again, like I said, I think we need to play with our D offset just a tad bit more. To get that dialed in but we're good we did our first print which is the zombie hedgehog swatch truck came out great or it's in black which makes it a little bit harder to see um but i just grabbed something i had on the ground that was open um but yeah thank you all so much for being out here and sticking around with me through this long day and another long stream um Let's go figure out somebody to go raid to. See who's up online. Let's let my dick pay off and redo my stuff. Let's go see who's online. We've gone into Free Heaven a couple of times. Um, what else we have? Willow. He's up to. Might be chatting. Um, Easy boy is well, what let's uh let's read over into this Perillo and uh yeah, we'll go ahead and well, let's do it uh, easy. He's doing, I believe, yeah, it's a Gundam he's working on right now. We'll go ahead and we'll head over to AZ Pinoy. Um, if, if you stuck around, thank you for sticking around. I did notice that the stream is taking some hits and it's breaking into multiple sessions. 
So I will fix that because I have been live for six and a half hours. So I will um, upload the single file um, that OBS has been capturing in the background and get that uploaded. And I'll try and figure out, once again, the uh, networking issues that I seem to be having. Uh, I have a feeling it's just breaking down the wind stream. Writer, but we'll, we'll get past that. So we'll go ahead and get the raid started. All right, so like I said, please come with me as we raid over to AZ Pinoy. Um, he's working on some Gundams right now, which are kind of cool little models to work on. And, you know, we, we like to even try and print some if we can find some. So, uh, yeah, let's go on over to AZ Pinoy. Thank you for being with me. And uh, let's go over there, show them some love, and enjoy your afternoon, evening, or your day. Thank you very much. <laughs>